They call it Buffalo, I mean Beaver Arena. <laughs> you see the Red Wings Beaver in front of us. Hey, claw machines? What's going on there? Whoa, trying to get the duck. Oh, Derek. <laughs> Derek, man, he failed. Well, I try the next time. Let's see how that goes. And does it work? Oh, and no. Hey, at least you got closer oh, than me, work. Devin. Live from Buffalo Wild Wings Arena, it's the Central Michigan Chippewas and Oakland University Golden Grizzlies in this ACHA matchup. Good evening, everybody. Happy to have you with us here from Buffalo Wild Wings Arena. Sort of a different vantage point we got going on here up in the top of the uh, bleachers here. There's a little stoppage there. There you go. There we are. Look at that. Technical difficulties always on this one. <laughs> Devin, Sarah, Derek Steele, happy to have you with me, buddy. As CMU begins their second semester, the final four weeks of their season, where they start things off in Troy, Michigan. This is your home, isn't it, Derek? Just a little this down the road for you. about 30 minutes away from me. You got some family and friends in the yeah, stands yeah. here tonight. Oh, well, that's awesome. You got family and friends and a packed crowd for both CMU and Oakland on hand today for this great matchup. Let's get you right into the swing of things. Let's start off by talking about the last time yep. we saw the CMU team, a nine to two loss on their own ice to number one Grand Valley State. The Lakers took care of business to say the least, Derek, in a dominant way. The only goal scorer for CMU in that game, Andrew Shiraki and Braden Keel, but he got his first in his ACHA career. Good for the kid on that. Yeah, really good for Braden Keel. I really like what Andrew Siraki was doing that game. We'll talk about him a little bit more in this pregame. But if you're Central Michigan, Devin, I think this month break for them could not have come at a better time. Playing the number two ranked team in the country being Florida Gulf Coast. Going down to Florida, playing at Hertz Arena, losing those two games. And then the following weekend, you get to welcome in or a home and home against the number one ranked team in Grand Valley State. So month break, chance to hit the reset button, and then now it's out of the gate full throttle ahead here for Central Michigan these final four weekends. You know, they make New Year's resolutions for a reason because we want to shed that old skin we had from last year where things might not have been how we wanted them yep. to, so they're looking for a New Year's resolution after those losses, like you mentioned. Well, let's take a look at the MCHC standings as they sit in the East Conference. Lawrence Tech still sits at the top spots, undefeated with only one tie to the name, 21 points. That's 10 wins, one tie in the 11 games, a record of 15-2, one to one. The Blue Devils continue to be a top five team and show their might. Meanwhile, Oakland University jumped all the way from fourth to second this past week as they took down U of M Flint and Saginaw Valley in overtime last week. A big one we'll talk about in the pregame and more. So they sit with five wins, two losses, and one tie to their name, 11 points. Saginaw Valley slots in then at the third spot. Four wins to their name, one tie, and one overtime loss in their regard. Central Michigan slots in right there at the number four. Three wins, two losses, 2-0 in overtime and one tie, good enough for nine points. Adrian College at the five spot, three wins, seven losses through 10 games. Michigan hasn't played a lot of conference games this year, only five. They're two and three in that record. Some tough losses in there to Lawrence Tech, but the reigning national champion slot in at number six, followed by Northwood and U of M Flint to round out the MCHC standings. Derek, today, some big games are going on around the country. Number nine, Saginaw Valley, who just got beat by this Oakland team, is taking on the reigning national champs in Artigedge, Canton. The Wolverines host Saginaw Valley. They're both looking to sort of take their momentum forward to get ready for nationals. Yeah, Michigan coming off that national championship win down in Boston about 10 months ago. They, Devin, have a really big target on their back this year, two and three in conference play. But I'm really excited to see what Saginaw Valley can do. Uh, the coaching staff over at Saginaw Valley having a really good team there. We saw them earlier yeah. this season back in, I believe, October or November, them seeing Oakland last weekend. Really good Saginaw Valley team, really good Michigan team. Those are going to be two really exciting games to watch this weekend. Yeah, their captain Kyle Kubiak was disqualified with five minutes left in that game. He might be out of that one, so you'll want to tune in on the Saginaw Valley stream and the social media to find out what happens. Also, number five, Missouri. This team has only lost four games in the last two years up to this point. They're number five in the country. They're taking on their rivals, Arkansas, from the Jones Center in Arkansas. That's ready for a 7.30 Central Standard Time slate. You can see updates on that. Arkansas has a live stream on their video, so go to Arkansas Hockey on YouTube to look up that stream. Finally, number eight, Calvin visits their crosstown rivals, Grand Valley State, number eight at number one from Griff's Georgetown, 7.30 p.m. The Lakers seem like they're unstoppable at this point, at least from our vantage point, yeah. but Calvin is one of the only teams this year to beat their rival, Hope, along with Oakland University, so they've got something to master there. 
Yeah, Kelvin's a team that's really coming off an impressive showing at the national tournament. Really good season for them. But you mentioned Grand Valley. We saw them about a month ago, did Central Michigan. They're looking like a really unstoppable team. But I want to go back to Missouri really quickly. That four check for Missouri, I got to see it up close and personal last year in Boston. Really good four check. So I'm really looking forward to that Missouri Arkansas game. Both teams coming off national tournament burst in Boston, trying to make it back to St. Louis in about two months' time. Yeah, Missouri was the sweetheart of that tournament. They got bounced by playing Hope, but they're looking for a back to back trip to Nationals and being one of the only teams ever to knock off the MCHC teams in the national tournament. We're going to step aside for now and bring you back with the rest of our pregame show. Don't go anywhere. This is CMU versus Oakland live on CCHM. Okay. Okay. Our YouTube stream might be bad. Uh, did you did you see it all? What it looked was looking like? When I checked, it was kind of buffering, and yeah. it said that the bit rate was a little low. I bet. Um, okay. That's what I want to know. Yep. Also, fans, we'd like to remind you that if you are experiencing technical difficulties with our broadcast, we will be uploading the stream at the conclusion of this game. So be sure if you want to listen in to CMU versus Oakland, you do so at the conclusion of this one. We'll step aside, bring you the rest of the pregame show next on CCHN. Show presented by Seamich Sorry about that one, folks. Remember, 
Our stream is buffering tonight, so if we continue with these problems during the pregame, we will end our stream and upload this game for you right away at the conclusion of this event. But let's get started with our discussion. Derek of the two teams on the ice today. Central Michigan visiting Oakland University. CB with a record of 6-9-2-1. 21 points. They have three wins in the conference, and they sit fourth right now. But we talked about their goal scoring woes continuing on from last year. 31 to five, they were outscored in their last full game before the North in Grand Valley. Their only five goal scorers came from amazing bottles, Campbell, Connor Beamish, Andrew Siraki, and Field. And this is the first of four weekends remaining in the season. This one starts in Oakland. They're desperately looking for anything to try and turn around what has been a struggling effort. Yeah, talking to head coach, um, Brennan Martin today, he talked about this like, there's a lot that could happen across the country. We talked about Mizzou and Arkansas playing in the first portion of our pregame show. So Central Michigan, one big thing for them is to continue worrying about yourself. Don't start looking at rankings quite yet. Just worry about playing your games and winning games and let the rankings happen and fall where they were. We saw last year when in the final rankings they were 17th in the country and it was Creighton who had to drop out so Central Michigan took that 16th seed and got their chance to go to Boston. So who knows what can happen here the rest of the way. Looking at the MCHC, the MCHC once again is a powerhouse having Lawrence Sec, Oakland, Saginaw Valley and then Central Michigan. So for CMU, it all starts tonight. It's a sprint to that finish line and to try and get their bid to St. Louis. Well, on the other side of things, one team that's looking a lot better in their bow to Nationals is Oakland University. 15 wins, five losses, two overtime losses and two ties throughout the season. They sit second in the conference, jumping Saginaw Valley after beating them in overtime last week. They've played back-to-back -back overtime games, and get this, seven on the year for this team. That's the most of any MCHC group this entire year and one of the most in the entire ACHA Division 3, but they have three wins in their last four games against the likes of U of M Flint, sweeping them last week and then Saginaw Valley tying and winning in overtime. Their best win this year is against number four, Hope, 8-3, to three. and this Golden Grizzly team after taking some tough losses to Lawrence Tech and the likes of Michigan State, that bodes well for them and why they set a number 11. Yeah, Oakland's a team that you really can't take lightly. I think they're one of the more surprise teams in the MCHC. We talked about them sitting, currently sitting in second place, only behind Lawrence Tech. So this is a team Central Michigan has to come in ready to play, and you have to play a full 60 minutes, Devin. We talked about the overtime games this year for Oakland. They have the ability, if it goes into that overtime period, to be able to finish you. So that's something Central Michigan has to keep an eye on tonight. This Golden Grizzly team has a mix of forwards, new forwards, and a lot of veterans. They return five defensemen on their line, with four of them being seniors. The likes of Thomas Monty, Ryan Kachi, Dun Ryan Kachi, Duncan McLeod, Griffin Geertz, and Luke Peck, and they have an experienced group. That's what that goal is, the chemistry. Looking at the series history all time, Oakland leads this 13-4-1. CMU has won those last couple of matchups in the last five games. Last year, these two split in the regular season. CMU lost 6-3 from Buffalo Wild Wings Arena, and then won their home ice 3-1. That was one of the pivotal wins that got them over the hurdles to get the Nationals. OU took care of business in the first round. They took them down four to three in the first round of the MCC tournament. Ultimately, CMU would get in the Nationals anyway, but we thought that loss would be the end of their season. Yes, but I want to look at this a little bit more on the bright side. You talked about that 13-4 and one for Oakland University. Devin Central Michigan has found success more recently against this Oakland University team. 3-1, 0-1 in the last two years against Oakland University, though that lost being in the MCHC tournament last season. All right, we're going to take one more pause here and bring you back to the pregame show with our impact players and Derek's keys to the game. You're listening live to the pregame show on CCHN.
We're back with the pregame show live here on CCHN. Devin Serra alongside my partner, Derek Steele and Derek, these two teams on the ice, CMU and Oakland. We've got some impact players to get to, starting with CMU's side. Who are you looking for as your two players? Yeah, the first player I got, Devin, is Connor Beamish, 17 goal, 17 game played, one goal, seven assists for eight points. Tied for the team lead in assists this season. He has had double digit assists in the last two seasons. I expect a lot from him on that third line for Central Michigan tonight but he's only had one point in his last four games, that being the one goal you've talked about earlier in this pregame show. So I'm expecting Beamish to turn a corner here tonight. The second player I have to watch for is Andrew Porzondik. He had a chance last season to tie up the playoff game with less than a minute left. That, Devin, was probably one of the nearest, closest misses I saw from Central Michigan last year. He's going to be one of those vocal leaders both on the bench and on the ice, so I expect to see a lot from him fifth on the team in points this season. Andrew Porzonic has struggled to score a lot this year. They need him in this lineup. When we get to the scratches in a moment, that will be important. Who are you looking at the Oakland side? For Oakland University, the first one I have to go with, Shane Arbar, 20 games played, six goals, 12 assists, for 18 points for him. Devin, he found fire against Central Michigan last year. Three goals, two assists in the regular season. All three power play goals, or all three goals came in the first game, 6-3 victory for Oakland University right here. All three goals were on the power play, had one goal in the tournament, also a power play goal. I really like the quote you had in the post game show last season. He can slither past CMU defenders at will. They wanna see him do that once again tonight. The second player I have is Evan Chippa. 23 games, 11 goals, 11 assists, 422 points. Coming off a four point series against Saginaw Valley, three goals and assists. So I expect to see a lot from him again here tonight. Alrighty, thank you, Derek. For the last point of this pregame show, CMU has, like we mentioned, struggled to score a lot. They have sort of lost confidence at the end of their uh, first semester. They've had a lot of roster changes, a lot of different looks tonight on the lines. We'll get to those in this more in the broadcast. But what are your keys tonight for CMU to knock off a really confident OU team coming off one of the biggest wins of the year against Saginaw Valley? First key to the game, doesn't Devin, trust your goaltending. It's going to be Lauren Jones going for Central Michigan this year. They are 5-2-0-1 when giving up three goals or less in a game. So expect to see them trust Lauren Jones a lot, veteran in between the pipes. I really like what head coach uh, Brennan Martin said to me, be him being a veteran leader for this team, and he stepped up big. They're looking for him to do that once again. Second key to the game, get your four check going from the start. I know it's very cliche, I know it's very easy to say, but Central Michigan is 5-3, 1-0 when scoring first this season. So when they see one go into the back of the net, then that's when they can find their groove and start seeing more going. They did not do that in either game against Grand Valley State the last time out. Third key to the game, clean slate. Forget last semester. We've talked about them playing the number one team and number two team in the country to end their first semester. So now it's a clean slate. Or clean slate. It's a brand new year being 2024. So fresh start for Central Michigan to make their push towards nationals. Alrighty, thank you, Derek. That was Derek's pregame keys to the game presented by CMHIceHockey.com for live stats, interviews, and more. Take a trip to CMHIceHockey.com. There, there you will find stats, news coverage, broadcast information, and more articles as well on CMHIceHockey.com. That's C-M-I-C-H-I-C-E-H-O-C-K-E-Y.com. That's gonna just about do it. Let's get your scratches for tonight's game on the CMU side real quickly. Tonight they'll be going without Will Rapoon, their defenseman transfer from the Division II team. Kyle Bowser, number 15. Andrew Miller, number 20. Number 26, Austin Rutter, the veteran forward. Nathan Bottles, assistant captain, will miss his first game as a CMU Chippewa since he transferred from NCAA Division III last year. A shocking decision by head coach Brendan Martin, but we'll hear about that more on the coaches show coming up. Christopher Martin, also captain of this team, will be out tonight out of this lineup. So you're without two of your three captains in this lineup. Dramatic changes in the lineup. Caleb Woolery and Nick Wilson, the two net miners, will sit. Sam Zalvison will back up. Isaac Hopp will be in there as a healthy forward scratch. Chris Arbitrow and Ryan Grolo will do it for your CMU scratches. We're just about set for puck drop here from Buffalo Wild Wings Arena, but before that, Derek got a chance to sit down with the head coach, Brendan Martin, about his locker room atmosphere and what he plans to do going forward to get this team on the right track. Don't go anywhere. Puck drop is next, live between Central and Oakland, live on CCHN. Thank <laughs> you. 
I'm Derek Steele here with The Coaches Show, sitting alongside Men's Division Three head coach Brennan Martin. Coach, not a way you wanted to end first semester with being swept by Florida Gulf Coast and Grand Valley. How do you bounce back from four tough losses like that? I think you just got to keep going. Um, it was a good break for them to have, and a lot of guys, you know, they all did the right things over break, and so, you know, the first couple of weeks of practice, there was a lot of talks that we had, and, um, you know, we met before the end of break just to kind of go over what we what we thought we were doing and, and what we could do better, so uh, we've made some adjustments this semester. You know, we, they have a really good team. It, we, we didn't see nearly their best hockey yet, um, so I'm hoping that we can see it tonight. You know, I, they're all energized. They got a new attitude to them, so it should be fun. What has the locker room been? Obviously, a four-game skid for you guys. What has the locker room been? Has it changed at all during that four-game skid, or has it kind of stayed the same? Well, I think it's definitely changed. Um, obviously, you know, you don't want you don't want to lose like that, so um, you have to make adjustments. But for for the guys to still get up and, and show up every day and, and have that uh, you know smile on their face, you know, they they want they want to see changes. They they want to see some adjustments made, and um, I think I think this is kind of what they've been waiting for since since the end of last semester so um, it, obviously you know you, you don't like that you, you don't like to see what's going on there at the end of the semester but um, there's still a ton of hockey left to be played and there's a lot that can happen in the country too um, from from a big standpoint but for us it's one game at a time one period at a time one shift at a time you know you talked about looking at those rankings and the country are you kind of looking at the ACHA rankings or as they come out or is it just focus on the next opponent and focus on who Central has to play? It, it's more focus on the opponent right now. Um, just from my experience playing, y it, there's a lot that can happen. There's a lot of changes that, that happen throughout each ranking period, but you know, you, you just have to control what you can control, right? And, and that's going in and playing sound 60 minute hockey game and coming out with a win. One last question, going with Lauren Jones in that tonight, what do you want to see from him in his first start for a second semester? No, I'm, I'm really excited for him to play. I mean, he's looked phenomenal in our first couple weeks of practice. He's earned it, and that's kind of what um, I've been preaching, at least to all of our, our goalies and the players too, is, you know, you, you got to earn that ice time. And um, Lauren's a vet. He's played in these big games before. He's, he's won some really big games for us, so we're excited. We have the utmost faith in him. We know he's going to do great. Well, thank you, Coach. That was head coach Brennan Martin. Make sure to stay tuned on CCHN Puck Drop. We'll be right after this. Starting that minders for tonight's game. First for the visiting Central Michigan Chippewas. They're going to turn their 33 Lauren Jones out of Fenton, Michigan. In two games played, a 379 goals against average, 806 save percentage, 100 and 1 record. The hometown Oakland Golden Grizzlies are going to turn to 35 Tate Pottinger, the junior, out of Grand Rapids, Michigan. In 11th game played, he has a 7-3-0 and 1 record. 35 goals allowed, 329 goals against average, and a 906 save percentage. 
Devin, what's the rest of the starting lineups look like? Thank you very much, Derek. Starting lineups for the Oakland Golden Grizzlies are going to turn to their forward groups. Number 11, Brendan Deneau out of West Bloomfield, Michigan, followed by Reese Williams at defense along with Thomas Monty. The other two forwards are Evan Chippa and Jack Abo. And Evan Chippa had the winner for them, 4-3 over Saginaw Valley last weekend. Meanwhile, for CMU, they're going to turn to their top units. Andrew Porzonic, Jay Nadeau, and Owen Campbell at defense. It'll be Brandon Clements and Kyle Robertson in a new look as the puck digs in, and we are underway for second semester action for Central Michigan versus Oakland University. First draw goes to CMU as they'll kick it deep to the zone. Owen Campbell is the first man there. The junior out of Jackson, Michigan, has been a force this year with the defensive work. Seven goals, four assists. CMU tries to defend out of their own end. Campo tries to work it up the left wing. Andrew Porzonic is the first one there. He's going to chase in after it. It's going to be picked up first time by the Golden Grizzlies and cleared out of the zone. That was Evan Shippa getting in the lane there. Meanwhile, CMU tries to manage their lines. First changes on the ice. Out comes the second unit. This is also a new group. Brandon Schultz, Connor Morgan, and Jace Johnson. The only time we've seen this group was Schultz and Morgan on the line earlier this year and their 2-1 victory over Notre Dame. First minute almost gone here from Buffalo Wild Wings Arena. Devin Serra and Derek Steele live for you. Puck is fluttering around in the end board area. Central trying to gain possession of it first time. It'll be chipped up and out of the zone by who else? Chippa. And this one cleared down the ice for icing. First whistle, and this will come back to Oakland zone. Yeah, Devin, I really like the energy from Central Michigan coming out of the gates. Andrew Porzondik, I saw him with a massive hit in the corner as Oakland University trying to clear it out. Don't know if that's something Brendan Arden has talked to them a lot coming into this game, but that's something I expect to see from them a lot here tonight is that high energy, fast play that we have known from them for years. Yeah, no doubt. This entire group has really struggled, as we mentioned in the pregame show, to score right off the hop, but they have been getting soundly better each and every time they step out on the ice. What I mean by that is gaining confidence. But the first minute of this game is still very young. First shot of the game off by Oakland. That one hit a pad of Lauren Jones, making only his third start on the year from Fenton, Michigan. Oakland trying to center this pass in front, and it was backed up to the net that time by the forward for CMU, or rather defensive Messina. Off the near wall, played off the skate blades, this time of Jake McCaddy out of Grand Blank. Pushed forward for... Mike Ozano had a goal in that SVSU series. Look out, funky bounce. Lauren Jones didn't know where it was. Now he'll whistle it off the far post. This one is stopped play as it looks like the net came off its moorings. Yeah, really good job by Lauren Jones. I don't really think he was able to see that funky bounce, but really good job to get his right blocker out there to stop the puck and keep this game 0-0, 18-13 remaining in the period. Puck is dropped in front of the central bench. This time it has carried the other way. Andrew Siraki trying to chase in after the forward Ryan Kachi. Backhanded out of the zone by Furtick. First time touch, one on three. Getting a shot through the wickets that time was Thomas Davis. Davis out of Sterling Heights, Michigan. Last played for CompuWare AAA in the 2021 season. Took a year off but came to this Golden Grizzly group to make up their high-flying offense. They're one of the best-scoring teams in the league this year, something that's complemented very high-scoring games. Their best win, the Oakland Golden Grizzlies have, is 8-3 against Hope College. Number four in the nation, another shot from the point blocked in front by Braden Keel. This one squirts out to the near corner, sent to the front of the net, shot, second time blocked by Gilgren, the birthday boy. Happy birthday to Josh Gilgren, just turned 21 yesterday. Meanwhile, this puck still in play in the corner. A couple of checks hard to the boards, this time taken up by Austin Furtick, trying to clear it free. Kielb is still working in desperately there, trying to get it out. Another centering feed is intercepted. Gilgren will just flip this over the blue line, give his team time, barely enough to change, and settle down by the assistant captain, Kachi. Forward in a pass for a bow. Turn button hooked by Kielb. This one flutters to the CMU bench area. Evan Chippa had a number of goals against CMU last year. Leader in points and assists on the season with 22 and 11. Respectfully, Oakland holds the zone. Good play at the line by Luke Peck. Works it cycle down to the slot area where a shot is taken on net, but blocked off the stick blade of Bishop. Got in the way of that one. Under duress for Oakland is Deneau. 
hemmed in by Julian Johnson. This one is cycled up to the top of the point. Stopped on a dime, shot taken. First try, second try. Now hit Lauren Jones, made the save, and it flooded to the end boards. A good start for OU. They are putting on the pressure early. This one cycled along the far half wall. Keel finally gets some room to settle this down. He's just gonna flip it out of the zone. One touch pass off the skate blade. Of that time, Duncan McLeod. Over the left circle now. Forward and ahead, CMU changes some more, and a backhanded hit by Luke Vasilovich that time on a bow. A good fast start to this game, but boy, Oakland University's taking the CMU right now. Yeah, this is the Oakland University team, Devin, that we expected to see. You mentioned that huge win against Hope College earlier this season. I think what's really more impressive for me is them going in the Griffiths Georgetown the very next day as the puck will go up and out of play off of an Oakland University player. But what was really imp more impressive for me, Devin, is them going into Griff's Georgetown the very next day, and they did lose to Hope College, but took them to overtime. 4-3 loss for them in overtime. Hope College, historically a very good team at home, so really impressive by the Golden Grizzlies to take them to overtime. Yeah, that was one of two overtime losses. We mentioned in the pregame show, this team, Oakland, has been in more overtime games than any MCHC opponent this year. Saved by the stick blade of Lauren Jones. That one got dangerous in front. See me working out of the zone, but Oakland has played in seven overtime games this year. Wins against Notre Dame, Saginaw Valley State last week, and New Mexico. Their losses, Hope, FGCU, and they've tied twice. Two of the same Eagles of Florida Gulf Coast and Michigan State, ranked in the top 10 in the country. This one, first save of the game off the real stick blade of number 35, Tate Pottinger. Say 42 on 45 shots in their 3-3 tie with Saginaw on this ice last week. He's been a busy guy, but this Saginaw team has been cycling four netminders all year. They have three dressed tonight with the likes of Caleb Godlewski and Evan Hayes. And Hayes, most notably, saved 38 of 41 in their overtime win against Saginaw. So Pottinger in net. CMU trying to get to work on the offense. It's picked up and flipped out of the zone. First time by Sharp. Something I've noticed from Central Michigan here tonight in their limited offensive zone time is they're just trying to flutter shots on the Pottinger. We really haven't seen them do this a lot lately. Central Michigan trying to find something to get past the junior netminder for Oakland University. A yeah, fast pace of this game, not a lot of stoppage. It's been all puck possession to OU to start. Still 0-0. Central has been hemmed in their zone for a little while in this period. It's Jace Johnson. That's the youngin' out of Riverview. And that's exactly what I was talking about. Really great job by Johnson. Didn't get the puck cleanly on his stick, but still able to get a little bit of a shot off on Pottinger. He's getting into the zone. CB's fourth line, a new look for this group. Jake Bishop backhanded in front of Soraki. Still flutters around. Gilgren tried to catch up on the near post, and CMU just could not get it under the state blade. So Oakland clears the zone, gives themselves some time to change. This new group with Vasilovich, Johnson, and Bishop, one we haven't seen all year. Virtually a brand new fourth line, but they're funneling in with the extra skater, that being Gilgren, who funnels in that third line. Meanwhile, Oakland right back to work on the four check shot. Just missed the near side glove of Lauren Jones. Trying to stick this one out of the mid air is Connor Beamish, one on four, moves into the zone, and Pottinger finds it in his glove to settle things down. 13-18 to go in the first period. CMU looking for some offense and a flop in front. That time by number nine, that was, that was odd. <laughs> trying to get a call, trying to do whatever you can to get up on the man advantage. Yeah, so Julian Johnson out of the far circle. We'll dig in against Matt Fanuff. Floated into the air and settled down. First catching there is Sam Kamara out of Orchard Lake St. Mary's. And tonight, Kamara playing against his former teammate of Orchard Lake, being Reese Williams, defenseman. Played there for two years, the likes of Connor Morgan and Sam Kamara on his line. This one's going to be whistled for an icing, and the OU bench cannot believe it. They're arguing that Julia Johnson touched the puck once, but they're going to give the whistle to CMU. Close call there 
by the officials. Going with the icing call, so the faceoff will go to Pottinger's right, left faceoff circle, 12.34 left. Devin, really like what Central Michigan has done here so far. Doing a really good job of setting up four checks, setting up their four check and getting shots on Pottinger. Yeah, it looked like for the first four minutes, Oakland was the quickest on the hop. Jones had to be savvy with a couple of good blocker saves, and since then they've been able to get it deep to the zone. Owen Campbell just does that. Top group is back out there for CMU. Jay Nadu tries to give support. Campbell will touch it up the near wall now, looking for room to work on the space. Tries to flutter one across to his defenseman, Brandon Clements. In front, off the left pad of Pottinger, saw that the whole way, picked up and button hooked by Davis for OU. Tried to forward that to Furtick, and he got his clock clean by Kyle Robertson. Meanwhile, OU goes back to work on the four check, setting it up at the blue line, far side for Monty. He'll leave it there for his forward, checked but from behind by Kyle Robertson. Now they'll cycle it across this time. Reese Williams tries to wind up. Former teammate of Morgan and Kamara, and it flutters into the netting for a stoppage of play. Nearly 10 minutes gone in this first period. Yeah, really good job by Central Michigan to be able to get a stick on that puck at the very last second, send it up into the netting. That's going around here at Buffalo Wild Wings Arena. I'd like to think that Lauren Jones would have made that glove save though. And yeah. it got into him. Yeah, Jones, you know, he was a longtime starter last year, the perennial starter for a lot of games, was enamored in their three to one win against Oakland, which helped them get over the hump. He's also in that against that win against Missouri State. Remember, they were number two in the country last year. CMU was on the outside looking in, and that win catapulted them to the top 16. They would fall to the number 17 spot the final two games of the season, and they would get in based on Creighton not being able to fund the trip to Nationals. So CMU got in as that bunker last team. Lucas Hutton, the freshman, Arnovi looking for a tip in front. Pottinger finally finds it in his wickets. That was a great job posting up in front of the net by Connor Morgan, and he's getting into it. And his former teammate Williams says, hey man, calm down. He's into it with Thomas Monty. Really like what Hutton was trying to do in front of the net there, trying to get the tip in and almost bat it out of midair and get it past Pottinger. Really good read from the freshman Lucas Hutton. Devin, ever since he's come to Central Michigan, and as I say that, he goes to the box, but ever since Hutton has come, started playing games, his first game being in the Adrian series, I've really liked what I've seen from Lucas Hutton. I have too, you know, he got an assist in his first start being before that Florida Gulf Coast series, and that was Adrian. He looked really comfortable, especially with this system that we've talked about, the goal scoring woes, but he's not necessarily known for that. He's more of that ability to be reliable, clear pucks out of the way. He's a fast, smart kid. I watched him play in the Michigan Elite Hockey Tournament this summer, and he was lighting it up as a good defenseman, reliable, and getting a lot of experience each and every game. 135 to go. CMU is actually it's on the penalty kill right now. As you talked about Hutton in front being able to uh, amass himself as a presence. Well, I think they gave him a penalty for a skirmish, so. Unfortunate, CMU on the penalty kill right now. Oakland going to work at the top of the point. Thomas Monty surveys his options. This one's set down in front. One time by Davis, saved off the stick of Jones and clear the length of the ice by Jake Bishop. Great clear there by Jake Bishop to get that to go down the length of the ice. 104 remaining in the power play. But Devin, this is where the difference maker for Oakland U was last season, especially in that MCHC tournament game that knocked Central Michigan out of the tournament. If Central Michigan wants a chance to win this game, they need to be strong on their penalty kill here tonight. Yeah, no doubt. Like you mentioned, first power play of the night. Oakland going to work hard, cross size feed in front. Good job clearing his man. That time was Camaro. Didn't allow a shot in front of the net. Thomas Monty holds the line. It's a quick passing. He missed the shot. Rip from the top of the point, left of the net. So backhanded this one. Another try from a sharp angle. Camara got in front of that. That was attempted by Chippa. 19 seconds left in OU's first power play of the night. Ryan Kachi holds the line. Drops it off there for a bow. Looks for his options. Brennan Schultz in defending in front there. Sticked away by Messina. And a long number attempt easily seen by Johnson. will settle things down with six seconds to go in the Lucas Hutton penalty. 
don't quote me on that, that's one of the first couple of shots Oakland University has had on this power play. Really good penalty kill from Central Michigan, but I really like what Sam Kamara did there, getting down on one knee to try and block the shot off the stick of Evan Chippa. Chippa sent it wide of the night because net because of the presence of Kamara. Solid win by Jay Nadu. Got the puck back to his defense and right cleared the length of the ice. Pottinger came way out of the net to play it. Kind of dangerously, power play is over, but their onslaught is not. OU back into the zone. This one is touched by Brandon Clements. Hard check in front of the PA stand by Owen Campbell. Clean the clock of Owen Storbeck. St. Clair Shores, Angie Porzondek. Forwards a pass for Jay Nadu. Top line, all oh, poke check on that one by Storbeck. Getting back, near side attempt. Played off of the feet of Pottinger that time. To center ice. Trying to settle things down is Plant, Brody Plant. Left it there for Kachi. Forwarded one through the wickets of his man, McCaddy. And this one, fans wanting an icing, they're not going to get one. Brandon Clements will touch it out of his own far corner. Here's Beamish. Long attempt of Campbell missed him, but it was touched up at the red line, so no icing for OU. 7.56 to go, first period. Devin Serra, Derek Steele. First game of the second semester, four weekends left for this CMU team. Trying to snap a four game losing skin against one of the best, number 11 in the country, OU. Out of the attacking zone, McCaddy, the speedster, forwards this one up the wall, intended for McLeod and it missed him. Some back and forth action between these teams. Robertson plays this one up the far glass and it will go up and out into the bench. OU jokingly calls for a delay of game, but it'll just cause a whistle and a face off. So 7.30 to go and Derek, we mentioned the lack of scoring. Five goals in the last four games CMU has, but just equally, they've been defending pretty well in this one. Yeah, their back check, Devin, has been as good as advertised here tonight. I really like what their defenseman has been doing, and it all starts with that first line of Kyle Robertson and Brandon Clements. Great job by those two. And then it just trickles down the roster. Effort is going to trickle, trickle down and we've seen it here tonight for Central Michigan. Well, the guys on the ice right now, Kamara and Keel. Kamara sent a shot on Etta Pottinger that was easily seen, but this is a new look. Braden Keel has played most of the year with sophomore Brandon Clements, the two sophomores, with Kamara, who's had a kind of an in and out role, has mostly seen time with the likes of Messina, sometimes Robertson, but Kamara is reliable as they come, and he's gotten in the poke check, he's gotten in the passing lanes, the shooting lanes, and blocked stuff. One of the most reliable sophomores on this team. One of the most reliable players. And right now we sit at a stalemate. 6.54 to go in this first period. Luke Vasilovic up the near wall. Checked his man from behind. Furtick. Held by Kiel. Intended for Vasilovic. Intercepted by Monty. They'll carry it into the zone. Here's Reese Williams with a shot from the far circle. That one missed the right post. Camaro. Tries to find some room to work out. Needs help with Bishop. Under duress. This time, McCaddy. Now a one-time blast. That one hit a stick in front. Dangerous bounce. Davis cleared that one far post. Up to the point for Thomas Monty. Monty will try to find some room to work. Power play is over. It does say that. Thank you, Sam. Sam Tomachinski, our assistant tonight. Thank you for that, Sam. Not always perfect here, fans, so. No, that was not a seven minute power play, if you were wondering. Face off will come, as we actually have a delayed penalty coming up here on CMU. So just as I turn that graphic off, they're gonna go have to go back. It's gonna be on Julian Johnson. The cross check. And that's something we've seen from Central Michigan a lot lately, is them taking penalties if you want a chance in this game, Devin, you don't want to give Oakland University easy opportunities like this. Let's see if they can bunker down on the penalty kill for the second time here One tonight. of the most penalized teams in the nation as well, CMU is. They rank top 10 in the ACHA Division Three in that regard. Right now, back to the penalty kill. Held off the first one. OU 0 for 1 on the night. Looking to cycle. Brandon Clements not going to allow that to happen easily. 
He pushes his man up the far wall. Attended the slot area. Great poke check by Brendan Schultz. And they're going to go off for a quick change. Yeah, Kills great, off 30 seconds. Great poke check there by Schultz. Being able to send the puck the length of the ice. And also what's it, what it's able to do is get fresh bodies on the ice for Central Michigan. OU, back to the attack. Stopping on a dime at the point is McCaddy. Send it across for a shot in front. That was blocked clear of the lane by Kachi. This one. Held in, still. Kachi from the point, another try. That one turned wide. Far post. One minute left in their second power play of the night. Behind the net, played by Jacobo. Crossed for McCaddy. In front, they score! Brendan Deneau got in the shooting lane, tipped that one, might have gone off a skate blade, but it means OU has struck it first. It's 1-0, they score on the power play. That's one Lauren Jones is gonna want back. Goes right through the five hole. What a shot there by Deneau for Oakland University, though. The leading point scorer for Oakland University getting yet another one here to his name. one nothing Oakland University lead. Well, that looked like McCaddy was gonna be the intended man in front there, but you said it, he got in front, and Oh did, did a great job for his team leading 17th goal on the season. We mentioned on the power play, that's CMU allowing another one. Boy, they allowed a lot of power play goals to Grand Valley State last week, or last week, last month. <laughs> We're in the second semester here. But the score? Reads 1-0, OU. As CMU has to go back to work. And Devin, to... if you're Central Michigan, this is a familiar spot for years for you, playing down one nothing. You don't want to be in this situation, but they have seen themselves here a lot. It's not time to hit the panic button yet, but you need to be able to start ex um, establishing zone time. Huge face off here for Central Michigan. Let's see if they can win this. It'll be Jay Nadu to take it. Won it over Brody Plant. Tried to get it back to the point for Hutt who cycled it down low. First touched by Oakland. And this one shot from, fluttered from the point. Skirted wide as CMU was trying to tip it in front. Now Porzondek, his own fire. That one rebounded wide. Now another try by Messina. And OU with a quick pace got across to block that shot. Like poor Zondek had a two by four to look at there. Here come the Grizzlies the other way. Reese Williams over the line. One on one through the wickets of three players. That one cycled to the far half wall where it's touched by Chippa left there for a slot attempt. Blocked in front by Connor Beamish. And Jay Nadu will go off for a change. But just as much as we credited CMU's defensive work OU's had a lot of good cycles across, finding the dangerous area. And Lauren Jones has added been savvy. 1-0. OU leads on the only power play goal scored by Brendan Deneau, his 17th of the year. Keel tries to send one in deeply here. Look out, cherry picking OU player coming in for the zone. Forward and ahead. Trying to get that one to Sharp. Up far into the ice, another blast from the point, blocked in front by Beamish. They'll say it was clear. Tended a forward pass for Siraki. This one, stopped in the far post. In the near corner. Off the glass, Central back in to change after it. On the ice will come the second line. Schultz and Jace Johnson. Jace still looking for his first goal as a Chippewa. The freshman of Brownstown, Michigan, four games this year. Has an assist, but he's known for that goal scoring ability. Had the most goals in MHSAA hockey last year, Michigan high school hockey. And a race for the puck. Braden Keel got there first. Had to block her away the body that time of the streaky man, Michael Santo. Holy smokes, Devin. Is this Oakland University team fast? Central Michigan doing all they can to keep up with the Johnson enters the zone. Johnson in deep. Helped out by Robertson. Played up the glass by Furtick. And that one's going to come back for a whistle. 1.55 to go in this first period. And as much as you would like to admit that they've generated good chances, a lot of them have 
been blocked in front. CMU, I'm talking about yep. shooting. And right now they've done everything to get all four lines involved. So far, haven't taken a penalty for too many men. But two in this game for Lucas Hutton and most recently Julian Johnson for a cross check. You have to keep up with the physicality and speed of this OU team. They fly. 15 wins on the year, number 11 in the country. Not only do you have to keep up with up them. Up in the points, sorry. Derek shot there from Brandon Keel. Look different. Different. And that one, the whistle coming. Oh my. Bishop turned around on the shot. The whistle came late as the net was off its moorings. Bishop can't believe that. What a feed that was by Clements. Put it on net. The blocker save came to the far corner. And Bishop was the one in front, and the the referee whistled it early. What can oh, what does man. Central Michigan have to do to buy That's a tough. goal, Devin? That's tough. When you're snake bitten, you're snake bitten. This Central Michigan team, they they're doing all they can to buy a goal well, right now. I don't even think that was snake bit, Derek. That was just an error on. I wouldn't even say an error. The, the net was off its boring. I do understand the relation, but that's a live play going on, and it took them a while to notice that. It's the right call, but a, a tough one for CMU. Brennan Martin, head coach, his second year in a row, last year, and his first full year wanting an explanation. But if you're Central Michigan, you finally found what you need to do to pit one past Pottinger. What a find it was by Brandon Clements to be able to find the man down low Great face-off win by Central Michigan, but you found what you need to do. Pepper shots on Pottinger, and you'll eventually be able to pit one in. Yeah, and Clements, again, persistent. A strong defenseman, doesn't score a whole lot, but he's a reliable source for that. Meanwhile, the other way, oh my, icing. That was Thomas Davis getting in for OU. Won the trapezoid race, and they called icing while Clements was behind. <laughs> so, just as much as they Gave a lucky break to OU. They give CMU one right back. That'll reset time. 1.12 to go in this first period. 1-0. A lot of confusion. This crew trying to get it together. Four-man crew here from Troy, Michigan. We'll dig in at center ice. And you know what they're going to do because of that? They're going to put it at center ice because they wrongfully whistled an icing there. So exactly one minute to go. Robertson trying to back his man into the end boards. That was Evan Chipup. Send it across for his man looking for a centering feed off the skate blade of Robertson. Back up to the top of the left circle. This one is cycled down low again. Central tries to chip it out, they can't do it. It's Michael Santa up at the point. Now Porzana gets to it. Breakaway attempt nearly for Campbell. Too far for him, 42 seconds left. Just waiting for his teammates to catch up. And he allowed OU to work him over. It's still loose in the slot. Now it's picked up and fluttered by McCaddy up the glass. Finds a man in Davis. 20 seconds, rather 30 left. This one off the near post. And Jones has gloved it down for a late whistle. Oh my, Campbell looked like he was gonna have a near breakaway attempt off of Porzonic's feet and he, he stopped skating. Presumably, puck was too far into the far zone, but it allowed OU to win it three on one bodies and chipped up the glass from McCaddy who had himself a good chance. Wow. And you, you know, Devin, that's something that Brendan Martin's gonna be talking about at the intermission report, or at the intermission, excuse me, but bad break for Central Michigan. Well, they get one here as Connor Beamis trying to skate over the line after that face-off win, 17 seconds. Taking the puck back was Deneau, the only goal scorer in this game. Chipped forward by McCaddy. Oh, trying to backhand this one to Kachi on the trailer. Five seconds left, Central will just hold, and that's gonna do it, two seconds left. One more shot attempt by Messina, and that one skirted over the right corner. So after one period, OU, two power play chances, they capitalize on the second one. Dino 17 on the year after the Johnson cross-checking penalty. We're gonna head to the admission report. Stay with us, Derek Steele will have that one for you. He'll give you updates from this game as well as some out-of-town scoreboards for you. Don't go anywhere, you're listening to CMU and OU right here on CCHN.
Derek Steele back here with you for the first intermission report. one nothing Oakland University lead over Central Michigan. Dino with the only goal for Oakland University, that being on the power play. It was a Julian Johnson cross check that pit Oakland University on their second power play of the night. Dino sneaking one right pass through the wickets of goalie Lauren Jones to give Oakland University the one to nothing lead. But Central Michigan finding some opportunities late in the period as Brandon Clements just throwing a shot on that, trying to get it past Pottinger. It was able to get past Pottinger, but the referees whistled it dead. It was waved off, one nothing still because the net came off its moorings. So one nothing is the score here. Only two penalties so far in this period have been two Central Michigan penalties. Taking a quick look at the out of town scoreboard, Men's Division Two is off this weekend. They will start a four game series against Northern Michigan next weekend, that being right at Martin Ice Arena on January 26th. John Gervasi will have that on Black Dog Hockey for you. The Women's Division Two team is currently in action against Aurora University, that being from Illinois. There is no broadcast there tonight. Actually, they will be going in about an hour puck drop for that game. 10.05 p.m. Eastern time, no broadcast for that 5.25 p.m. puck drop. Make sure to tune in to their social media for score updates on that. Looking around the MCHC, Devin took you around there, but number nine, Saginaw Valley is traveling to Michigan to play number 10, the Michigan Wolverines defending national champions. Calvin and Grand Valley dropped about two hours ago, that being over in at Grand Valley. You have Flint and Adrian will dropped about an hour ago and Hope is playing out in Nebraska 730 puck drop taking a look around other division three games if my page will turn there we go the page finally turned for us Missouri and Arkansas that being a 730 p.m. central time 830 p.m. game eastern zone time so that game is about half an hour underway and number 15 Notre Dame taking on number two Florida Gulf Coast that game dropped back at 6 p.m. Taking a look at Central Michigan's out-of-town scoreboard, Toledo is in town to play the Chippewas in men's basketball that tipped off at 7 p.m. It is on CBS Sports Network, one nationally televised game for Central Michigan. And then gymnastics is at Eastern Michigan here for a 6 p.m. start over in Ypsilanti. Well, 20 minutes is on off the board. 40 minutes to go, Oakland University leading. Central Michigan one and nothing. Devin Sarah will be back with you after this with the second period here on CCHN, your home for Chippewa hockey.
We're back with you inside Buffalo Wild Wings Arena. The score, one nothing. In favor of the home team, Oakland University, Derek Brendan Deneau had the only goal in that period, his 17th of the year on a tip shot in front, intended by Jake McCaddy, power play goal. Uh, one for two, they finish. CB hasn't had a chance at the extra man, uh, but they kind of matched the defensive intensity. Shots were 10 to nine in favor of Oakland. Uh, back and forth we go. This CB team has been close. They haven't found gold yet. How do you assess their play through 20 minutes? Yeah, I really like what Central Michigan has done. And Devin, you mentioned it, especially on the defensive end. I really like how they're getting down and blocking shots, doing all of the dirty work. Really good job for Brendan Martin and company through the 20 minutes. Now, if they can find the back of the net and put one past Bottinger, now that would be especially nice to have this game up at one apiece. Well, that's the name of the game in this one. We get underway, Central Michigan, left to right in their maroon and gold sweaters, the maroon and black lettering CMU. Oakland in their white and black, a really nice uniform. I really like what OU brought out this year with the gold. So CMU goes to the attack, shot from the point, blocked in front first time. Getting there was Tommy Davis out of Sterling Heights, Michigan. This one attacked to the point by Kyle Robertson. Turnaround shot, Pottinger had to be savvy with the left pad. It skirts to the near corner. Picked up here by Porzonde. And you know, we talked a lot about momentum. Oh, look out, that one went off the post there. Getting in front was Davis with a near shot. You heard the building erupted, a sigh of relief for CMU and excitement. Wow. So close. Kyle Robertson has the button hook after that scare. Owen oh, Kempel will chase after Reese Williams. McCaddy over the line, waits for his options, tried to center one in front, streaking down memory lane was Austin Furtick. Look out, Brennan Clements took a hard check behind the net, behind the play by Furtick, gets up to his feet, regains his stick. Oh, you can trust changes, and they're gonna have the zone with that. Kachi can't hold it in now. Back to retrieve it is McCaddy, has had a lot of ice time, has not gotten off yet. McCaddy dangles his way to the slot, poke check by Robertson, tries to funnel this off, sealing the wall was Kachi. Now Robertson will find some room, he's gonna flutter this into the upper stanchion, and that's gonna cause a whistle. Clements is not happy with the official, he's arguing he got his neck pulled by Furtick on that last check. Stop play with a minute and 30 gone in the second period. Fans, don't forget that the CMU Club Hockey Network YouTube channel is your one-stop shop for highlights, exclusive interviews, and full game broadcasts for CMU men's D3 and women's D2 hockey. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you're going to never miss a moment of Chippewa hockey. Just go to YouTube and search CMU Club Hockey Network to find the channel. CCHN, your home for Chippewa hockey. Chippewa was at a dangerous angle. He tried to flutter it over the glove of Jones and missed the far post. They stay to work. Chip up in that same corner. Gets it behind for Jack of Bow. Top line for Oakland and a shot saved from Kachi. Really good save there by Lauren Jones and Devin. I really like what he has done, especially for, since that Dino goal, Dino go, goal, excuse me, knew I could finally get that word out. But really good job by Lauren Jones to keep doing what he does best and some really good saves from the CMU netminder. Yeah, you know, Jones out of Fenton, Michigan a junior in his time. He spent a lot of time in the USPHL, was a journeyman, went to three different camps to try and find time with the team. He told me a story one time that he was in a camp headed for Illinois, and that same morning, he didn't know whether he was gonna make the team or not, the USPHL. He came out to CMU in the afternoon for his tryout. They were immensely impressed. At the time, it was Tyler Cataline who was relieved of his duties midway through last year, and Cataline said, hey, Come on with us for the entire year. You can get a college experience and play for a great team. He did. Got them the Nationals as the 16th seed as this one's backhanded into the glove of Pottinger by Soraki. And Jones took that challenge with full head of steam and was great in that minor last year. Won a number of games for them. Struggled with some lower body issues and has fought through all of that. He's earned himself a third start of the year where you said at the pregame show, Brendan Martin said he just flat out earned it. He wants to establish that kind of code with this team that you gotta get your ice time, you gotta earn it. The yeah, only way to do that is work hard like he did. I really like what Lauren Jones has done this season. We've mentioned that only this being the third start for him, but he's pit his head down and he's pit 
and he's worked his behind off. Great showing from Lauren Jones here so far tonight, though. Their behind off is Oakland, it's front, they score! What a tip in front. I believe the first man to it there. Wow. Another one that gets quickly tipped on the near side of the rush. It's 2-0 Oakland. Jewel St. Marie getting that goal for Oakland University. But right as we're complimenting Lauren Jones, what a play there by Oakland University. Getting that puck in front of the next so St. Marie can knock it past the Central Michigan netminder and they get a 2 nothing lead. That is his first goal of the season after returning to this team, Derek. Did not play much of the year. Matter of fact, he's played less than five games. But he comes in, St. Marie first, and the second goal for Oakland in this game. What a rush that last chance. 2 nothing is the score. What a four check it's been for Oakland University, Devin, though. Getting out, getting numbers in space, and what a find it was in front of the net, getting the puck to St. Marie to make it a 2 nothing lead. Devin, this Oakland University offense is something special. No doubt. And they were fast and physical last year. They won 6-3 to three on this ice. In that game, CMU had the opening goal, but that was quickly amassed by five unanswered. Look out, it's loose in front. St. Marie looking for his second, and Jones got there with the stick blade. I don't know how Dominic Ruiz got in his way to the dangerous area. Ruiz will go off now. Central is chasing OU all around right now. Camara is going to find some room to just flutter this up the wing and get it to Campbell. Here's Chase Johnson, tries to backhand his way into the front of the net, looking for his first, and Pottinger stuck with him the whole way. Now another try by Clements in the high slot, and that's gloved down for a whistle. Yeah, I really like going back to Oakland University's for a check really quickly. I really like what Sam Camara has done on the defensive side. He's pit his body on the line time and time again. Dove for the puck, somehow got a, uh, a poke check to the corner. Great job there by Sam Kamara. Well, Johnson was the one that got inside with his body, Derek, and he used leverage to try and stuff it far side. Past Pottinger, and he said no. Now Morgan, with a hustle, forwards it for Jace. Not without Brody Plett getting there first to it. He's gonna forward this one up the wing. Sharpay tries to get this one in front and glove off the tip skate blade. Jones found that one and stopped everything. 15, 17 to go in this second period. Have Joel St. Marie scoring even strength. Yeah, if you're Lauren Jones right now, yes, the scoreboard is showing two to nothing in favor of Oakland University, but you still have to keep your head up. You have done a lot of things right for Central Michigan, and there's a lot to be proud of. Granted, two shots that he wishes he could have back. Soraki to turn heel. Retrieve it back by Clements. Takes a lick up the boards by Sharp. Monty in hot pursuit. Gilgren to touch it first. Plant intercepted. Pushed out of the play by Clements. Over the stick played by Gilgren. CMU, two on one chance. Pottinger made the blocker save. In the corner. Beamish trying to work it free. A couple of hard checks. Gilgren gets wrestled down to the ice by Monty. Players fall, get up. Now Vasilovic turns around with a quick shot. Not without getting checked in the face by Monty. There's gonna be a whistle coming up. And I think there's gonna be a penalty on CMU. It is, it's Gilgren. Very unfortunate circumstance. I think they're gonna send Monty as well. They will, that's gonna make this one coincidental. And Derek will have to rate for the rolling. This could mean a little bit of open ice, four on four. As Gilgren and Monty, we called it, went down in the corner. Gilgren got wrestled, took Monty with them. They got him quickly, but not without a couple more pushes and shoves. So the captain for OU and Monty, and Josh Gilgren, who turned 21 yesterday, happy birthday out of Atlanta, Georgia. Played for Purdue Northwest in the Division I ranks last year. Decided to come up to CMU after some connections. Has found a roster spot on this team, a hard worker. Both players are gonna go to the bench for coincidentals. Monty and Gilgren, four on four for the next two minutes with 14-19 to go. Robertson with some open ice. Pottinger found it in the chest protector. 
And if you're Central Michigan, that's exactly what you want to do, is you want to continue to pepper Pottinger with shots. They have done that really well here tonight, Devin. If you just keep hitting shots on net, finally, or eventually, you're going to find one to go past Pottinger. So four on four. It's Porzondek trying to find some room. He'll center it up to Jay Nadu, looking for a room to slot it. Robertson was not ready for the feed. He was looking away from the puck. Up come the Grizzlies. Great feed by Davis into the center zone. Porzonic will take possession back. Good clean feed to Robertson. He'll gain zone time. Toe drags wide of the goal. Now up to the point for Campbell. Back to Robertson, near side, and that one blocked off the right shin of Kachi and wide. And we've got a whistle, and they might be assessing a penalty. No, an odd circumstance. I think they're going to look at the net. Yeah, it looks like it. I well, think that they're was saying why the, the net came off the The reason there was the pause for us is the linesman back at the blue line whistled to the Oakland bench with a hand up. I thought for a second maybe they were looking at a too many men, four on four. No penalty coming up, we stay here. Looks like Pottinger was resetting that net. That side has come off three times in this game already. Pretty common occurrence at this ice bar, Buffalo Wild Wings in Troy. Oh, look out, stifty move. Good defensive play by CMU to not allow the streaking Davis to get in front. Now it's center. Schultz takes that passing away in. By the way, that was Messina. Mark Connor Morgan, one on one, uses the body, tries to backhand this on net and turn it wide. Camaro up at the point, looks for room to snipe it. Morgan gets time to possess. He'll work it up to Messina. Takes one, loose in front, gets there to it is Schultz. Gets pushed to the trap door. A bow. Trying to fold it out of the legs. Now another try by Messina trying to break the scoring drought. And he turned it wide. If only Central Michigan had someone back there, back door there, Devin, they it would have been such an easy tip in. Great last 30 seconds by CMU's Connor Morgan, who gloves this one. Pottinger having to keep his edges on a drift. And if you get my drift, Central has really done a good job getting back and forth, but they can't find goal. They just cannot find the back of the net. They've been snake bit, outscored 33 to five in their last five games. Two nothing is the score for OU off of Brendan Deneau's power play goal halfway through the first. And most recently, Joel St. Marie, his first, makes this two nothing. So Rocky to leave this one in retreat for Robertson, who dumps it. Touched first by Monty. Rather check that, Monty's in the box. Sana was there. Now Monty will go to the bench. Out comes Chippa. Deneau, first goal scorer of the game. A long attempt at Jones. That one was going wide, but he elected to glove it anyway. 12.03 to go in this second period, and Derek a lot of line shuffling going on. We've seen mostly out of this game that third and second line. The likes of Connor Morgan, Josh Gilgren touched the puck a lot. We called Morgan's name a lot. He had a goal in this series last year, the first one in their six to three loss on this ice. He's played well here, albeit a disappointing one last year. And look out, OU at a sharp angle trying to connect one in. That was Deneau. At the point, Monty redirected once, twice, in the wickets of Jones, he's down, and it's still loose in the far corner. Now it's cleared out to the half wall. Monty with another try, and Clements was there. Look out, Campbell trying to take a long stretch pass, and it was too strong for him. A lot of Pottinger to turn it around. Robertson at the point. He flutters to the slot. Monty to take away that shooting lane for Nadu. Nadu got away with a hook right there on Monty. Clements now. Catches up with a bow. Settle down in CMU zone. Chip up in front, looking for Deneau. Off the skate plate of the opposite 11. And Owen Campbell could have gone on a break right there. CMU fans want a slashing call. They're not going to get one. Campbell was the man, a first to the puck. Clemens gets worked over by Deneau. Comes free to the zone, 11 on 11, with 11 minutes to go in the game. How about that? Make a wish. 
Clemens behind his own net. To work in front, turn the puck over. Jones once, twice, three times. And it's up on a play off the skate of St. Marie. Oh my. That one, nobody was in front to clear the lane. And Jones had to take an onslaught of swats to his right pad. I think Lauren Jones' heart rate just went up about 20 or 30 ppm there, Devin. But great job by the veteran netminder to stay calm and keep his pad in place and not let them swat it past his pad. Abo gets pressured down to the ice. Check that, St. Marie falls, loses his helmet. And they're gonna have to use the mouthpiece with that one. St. Marie got pressed to the ice by Robertson on an incidental play. Don't believe they're gonna assess a penalty to Robertson here, but that's really unfortunate for the young kid in St. Marie. So teams will get a chance to change, and rather we got a penalty coming up here on OU. That's on Dominic Ruiz. Oh my. Where was the official call on that one? My eyes deceive me. Hey Reagan, let us know, man. <laughs> Reagan Cleaves, thanks for pitch hitting tonight, Derek Steele. Tough one. As this one out of the face off CMU to their first power play of the night. If you're Central Michigan, golden opportunity to claw your way. I thought going to call that. Sorry, it's cross checking on Ruiz. I'm sorry to hear that. Sorry to interrupt you. If you're Central Michigan here, Devin, golden opportunity to get back into this game if you're able to score on the man advantage. You have about a minute and a half. They haven't gotten any zone time yet, though, Devin. Messina. Take it out of his own, back to the end boards. One touch, bounce off the board. Taken by Morgan. Surveys his options. Worked it to Johnson. Put some speed into that. Baseball bats the seat to the zone. Johnson trying to turn around this one. Gilgren, wrap around, try doesn't go. Now Messina winds up. That one caught a piece of Pottinger. Connor Morgan to collect it. Look for somewhere in front. Messina back at the point. Cross ice feed for Johnson. Jace Johnson looking for his first. Sends one in front of the net. That one went off a skate play. That was Storbeck in front. At the far corner, Beamish. Once again, tries to work it up the funnel. And it's a good defensive play by Brody Plant. Into the passing lane. Johnson out of his own zone. The young man out of Riverview. 32 on the power play. Morgan. One on one against his counterpart, 21. And Chippa. Taken over by Kachi. Now centered by Messina. Gains the red line and dumps into the zone. And they're going to say this one went out of play. Wow. So when you thought for a second, look, that time Gilgren tried to wrap around try, funded up to Messina, had a good look in front. That's a, not the, the result you want, obviously. He did generate a chance, however. Yeah, Devin, Central Michigan, they've had a number of times where they're just oh so close, haven't been able to capitalize on any opportunities yet, but they have done a lot of things correctly here tonight. Brandon Clements trying to get out of this 2 nothing drought. Out of the box comes Ruiz, CMU 0 for 1 on the power play tonight. Here's Campbell. In the end boards. Fighting desperately for that one with Chippa. Porzonic up to Robertson, winds up. That's blocked in front. Off the hip of Furtick. Forward for their captain, Kachi. They tried to get one back to Furtick to reward him, and it scutters in on Jones. 8-12 to go in this second period. Central with the last four shots in this one. Fans, just a reminder that the broadcast of today's game is a copyrighted presentation of the American Collegiate Hockey Association, the CMU Club Hockey Network, and more Hall Television. No reproduction, retransmission, or other distribution is other descriptions or accounts of this game may take place without the express written consent of the ACHA, CCHN, and MAC TV. Draw became a stalemate, as it is at the half wall. You see on your screen. Once again, the Conclusion of this game, this broadcast will be uploaded in full 720p with no buffering. Buffalo Wild Wings Arena in Troy, Michigan. Devin Sarah, Derek Steele, Oakland U. 
looking for wins in four of the last five. They beat Saginaw Valley four to three in overtime last week. Jones Study gloved that one catcher style and it rimmed over the top of the crease. Monty at the point, winds up. Central gets in the blocking lane. That was Kamara. Up the wall, one touch by Vasilovic. Set back by Williams. Former teammate of Kamara at Orchard Lake St. Mary's. OU will get wholesale changes. They have the Chippewas. Vasilovic to get there to it. Bounces one for Kamara. It flutters across. Jones, glove save, but couldn't hold it. Camara, stretch pass intended for Julian Johnson and that one missed. Touched over the line by Deneau. They get over center. OU gets the change, CMU does not yet. Chase Johnson to go in after, now they will. Actually they won't. It's an icing call and Brennan Martin can't believe it on their bench. Assistant coaches Charlie Hayes and Tyler Koth arguing that it was over the red line by Johnson. Johnson not happy about that one. From his point of view, Devin, looks like he won the foot race to the puck. Similar call to what was called in the first period, but Oakland University yeah. getting called for icing. This one going back in the Central Michigan zone now. That means this line has to be out there. Well, now they're gonna let them change. I stay corrected. Usually on icing calls like that, you need to change, right? I think since the official got that one wrong, they have a couple of times that I reward them with a line change. Gilgrid now. Works it up the far point. They still aren't out of the zone yet. Now they are. Every time Central tries to get this puck out, it seems like it takes all five men. OU, meanwhile, goes right back to work. They'll try to send one in, and it's tipped into the blockers of Jones. And in front of the net was Luke Peck trying to jam away. I really like that vision there by Lauren Jones, though. Being able to see it right off the stick of Luke Peck, not being fooled by the same mistake twice. That's exactly how Oakley University scored their first goal. Great adjustment there by Lauren Jones. Yogan at the far wing. Lucas Hutton. They jam this one up the boards. It's tied up for a moment now. Deneau gets it free. He'll look in front there. Trying to get it to Sharp. Another try from the point, skirts wide. Deneau carries with it through the wickets of Messina on a dive, a bow across the way, shot, turned wide. At the half wall, Bo takes a check from behind by Siraki. Gets kissed up for a moment, Gilgren now. Bats it over to Bemish, who will gain the red line and go off for a change. 5.40 to go in this second period. Still OU with a two nothing advantage. So Rocky in front for Morgan. Pottinger couldn't find it for a second. And that one nearly went off the skate blade of Morgan in. Oh my. Hutton now with the assistant captain Messina, the only assistant captain on the ice for the Chippewas. Both Nathan Bottles and Christopher Martin scratches tonight. Another scrum for it in the near corner this time. That's Ruiz over there. Messina trying to hem it across. Does not want that puck to get free. Now it will. One time blast in front. And they're going to say it was played with a high stick. Fanuff was the one in the corner, not Ruiz. Either actually it was Ruiz. 88's number eight. If you're a Dale Earnhardt Jr. fan, you would get those mixed up too. But 4.59 to go. That's a NASCAR reference. Yeah, I went there. 4.59 <laughs> to go in the second period. Uh. Connor Morgan lost that draw to Fanuff. Ruiz can't hold the line. Schultz clears the length of the ice. Do they get the icing? They do. Duncan McLeod got back there first. Chase Johnson really showing off the speed there, Devin. Trying to race down the ice to wave off the icing. Just a step too slow, though, as it will be called icing and the puck will go back in the Central Michigan zone. With all this start and stop, frustrating. CMU's taken a lot of icings as they really have in their system a lot as of late. Morgan gets a second crack at it and lost it again. This one flutters in on Jones, a bouncing puck, and he's gonna glove it out of air. For it got off center. Another whistle coming up. And at some point, you gotta look at this defense and figure out a way to avoid those quick ices. 
OU. Back to work, St. Marie. Button hooks Clements across for his man. They look to go back and forth behind the net. It scutters in the slot area. Played off the glass by Robertson. Chipped by Schultz, trying to get to their defensive system. As it breaks down, Ruiz can't find this puck. Both these lines have been out here for a long time. Last minute and a half. Up the glass, Clements they're working out of the blue line. That gives the Grizzlies a chance to make two changes. Off goes Ruiz, cutting inside of the net. Johnson got hooked on the play with no call. One and one badly, and then looking for his first. One-time blast, missed on the net by Campbell. Up the near corner. Right circle chance by Johnson. Sticked out of the air. Campbell can't find it, first to it. Here come the Golden Grizzlies, three on one develops. They go across, one touch, Brandon Clements with a defensive stand. Oh my, holding off three Grizzlies and that gives him a break the other way for just a moment. A crosser pours out and can he miss the net on the pass by Campbell. I want to go back to that play by Brandon Clements. What a job being able to stay home, intercept that pass and get Central Michigan back to the puck so they're able to set up their four. Clements for Camaro in front and Pottinger had to be Quick with the right pad once again. Back and forth action. Central is so close, but also so far as they allow a three on one. Porzonic persisted in the zone. Stretch pass missed. The intended Grizzly over there, Furtick. Camara finds it under his pads and Campbell. Loops for room to get it to Porzonic. He's had by three Grizzlies. They come back to the four check. Shot from the point, saved off the blocker of Jones. Up the glass, Kiel. Looking for room to work it to Campbell. Got worked over by Furtick. Brody Plant with speed, into the slot, missed the net. Another try on the near corner. And that one's whistled down. They say Jones got it. But coming in there quickly for the chance. OU is really Good in transition. I mean, every time Central has gotten the neutral zone, Derek, they work it up the glass, get it to the cross ice feed, and it's right back into work. And this Central group has to be looking a little tired. Yeah, they've done everything they can to be able to keep up with this Oakland University team. But Devin, I'd argue this is probably probably one of the fastest teams I've seen in the MCHC this Chippa year. Chippa with a shot, sorry Derek. That one bounced off the blocker of Jones. It had a little more smoke than it looked at first. This one from the point easily seen. But you're right, this is, this is the kind of thing where bounces are all over the place. It's been a bouncy ice. The boards here are real springy. Guys have been getting into it in the corners especially. Somehow we're only at three penalties in this game if you count the coincidentals, four but it's been a lot chippier than that. Yeah, and these referees have done a really good job here tonight, Devin. They've let a lot have they go. Though? <laughs> they have let, let a lot go. They, they have, have let, let go, yeah. They have let the boys play. Well, I just referred to earlier when they had about two missed icing calls and Sammy's bench was irate, so they let him get a free line change because of it. OU, Jake McCaddy, up to the point. Worked across, a shot on the net. That one seen by Jones off the stick of Kachi. Back in by Sharp in front. Underneath Johnson. Finds Lucas Hutton who just flutters it over the red line. Sent back in by Storbeck right away. Couple of whacks by Morgan. 124 to go in this second period. Stay with us, the intermission of work. Coming up next, I will have that one with you to recap this one and get you some big out of town scoreboards. Let's just say it now, CB Benz Basketball takes down Ooh. one of the top teams in the back, Toledo. They were on national TV today, CBS. What a great game that was for Central Michigan. What a special basketball team that is, Devin. You had a chance to call the Kent State victory last Saturday with Parker Morrison, our colleague and good friend. Yeah, and CMU got the win over Kent State, who was the top team at the time. They won by 15 a really dominant performance. They were down by 12 early in that game. Came all the way back, tied it up after half, stormed ahead, Marcus Harding had himself in a terrific game. Should have checked those stats out more in our intermission report, but the man on the ice right now is Brandon Clements. 
and he's regaining a glove that he fell on the ice. 55 seconds to go in the second period. Central still without a goal in this hockey game. The only one scored by Deneau and St. Marie for OU. Left circle draw. One by the Chips. Clements feeds into Robertson. He'll sauce this one up ahead for Campbell off his skate blade. Monty there to it first. Campbell's gonna push him face first in the boards. Jane Adu with speed, trying to work a pass in the cycle. Robertson at the point, down to Jane Adu. In front for Campbell, and Pottinger made the right blocker save. Right pad save, rather. Robertson retreats. Kept deeply by Davis. They both fall to the ice. The late penalty coming up on OU. Jones needs time to change. 12 seconds left in the period. Central bench screaming, get it out. Jones goes off now. Seven seconds left, but it's touched by Monty with six to go, and it's going to be a hooking call coming up on Thomas Davis. Devin, Central Michigan playing a little bit of keep away there as Davis goes to the box. But you got to think there's about 30 seconds left on the game clock when the referee's arm went up. So Central Michigan might have wanted to let Oakland just touch up the puck, get as much of a man advantage as you can. I would disagree. I would want you to hold this puck for as much time as you can entering the second or rather third period. Nonetheless, they get 6.6 .6 seconds to dig in for the draw. Connor Morgan wins that one. Back up to the high slot. Jace Johnson winds up. That went off the back of Ryan Kachi. One second left, another try from the point, and that one once again blocked. And that will do it for time as it expires. So CMU cannot find the back iron. A number of tries by Gilgren, Morgan, and that time Johnson. But it's OU with a 2-0 lead. The only goal, his first of the year, by Joel St. Marie. So we head to the break. Intermission report coming up next. I will have the, that one for you to recap this action pack. Second intermission, second period. Get you some out of town scoreboards. Woo, take some water. Third period is coming up here. Stay with us. You're listening to CMU and Oakland live on CCHN.
to Inside Buffalo Wild Wings Arena for the second intermission report presented by CMHIceHockey.com. OU leads this game 2-0 over CMU, who is still without a goal in this game. They had 13 shots in that second period to match closely to OU's 19. They officially shot out shoot CMU in this game 29 to 22. And the second goal of this game scored by Jules St. Marie, his first of the year, assisted by Matt Fanuff, along with Dominic Ruiz. And it was a good job to get in front of the net. They have gotten some fortunate bounces in their way. The opening goal of this game was a tip in front by Brendan, Brendan Deneau off a shot from the far corner by Jake McCaddy. This time, it was Fanuff who put it on the net in front of the crease, and it was tucked in by St. Marie, who got rewarded for that one. It leads to a 2-0 score. In this game, there's been a lot of back and forth. Oakland had an odd man rush with seven minutes to go in the second period, but it was Brandon Clements, the sophomore defenseman, who got back in front of the net, sticked away the passing lane, and cleared it the length of the ice for CMU to get an odd man rush their own the other way. They would not capitalize off Owen Campbell's blade, but it set a tone in which these two teams will be back and forth physical the entire remainder of this period. We mentioned the only goal in this one from Oakland. But at the end of this period, it's Tommy Davis who takes a hooking call for OU, which leads to a CB power play. They will get 154 to work with when we rejoin the ice in this third period. So if you want a silver lining, Central's getting their looks in front. They're actually clearing the zone when they have to. They played a lot of time in their own but it's taking a full team effort right now for them to find a way to muster any kind of offense, and they've been making their chances known, not able to get a task. Kate Pottinger, who's been terrific in this one, officially saving 22 so far. As for our out-of-town scoreboards, real quick for you, CMU men's basketball gets the upset today over top-ranked Toledo on CBS Sports Network. The game at Mount Pleasant took place where Central was clutched down the stretch. Marcus Harding had himself a great night, and they officially win that 65 to 60. What a job for CMU men's basketball. Meanwhile, gymnastics is in action against Eastern Michigan today. That result, you can go to cmuchippewas.com for that. The women's team is in action against Aurora tonight at 10.05 p.m. Eastern. Make sure to check out CMU women's hockey on social media, Instagram, Facebook, and X, that being old Twitter, for updates on that. We don't have a broadcast, unfortunately. Had to pitch hit some guys here to get us in, Derek Steele being one of them but we will have more for you next week when they get ready to take on Ohio State. As for now, we've got one minute left till the teams rejoin the ice. Derek Steele will rejoin me. It's 2-0 right now, a home team, Oakland University, trying to hold on against CMU. We'll be back live for the rest of this game. In the third period, you're watching CMU in Oakland on CCHF. Shots from the second period. Yeah.
us back. Third period awaits us from Buffalo Wild Wings Arena. Devin Sarah, Derek Steele with you. Oakland University has a 2-0 advantage over Central. Who shot the puck 13 times on net. Tate Pottinger has made all of them. He has been pestered a ton, but he has stepped up in the biggest ways in most moments. Meanwhile, Oakland has gotten fire from Deneau and St. Marie in this game. Chippewas need final 20 minutes here, and they got to make something quick. But, Devin, it's huge for Central Michigan that they are starting on the man advantage. They have a minute 54 for the penalty. It was a Davis penalty late in the second period, so Central Michigan starting the third period on the man advantage. If they're able to find the back of the net, Devin, I'd say this is a brand new ball game. Tommy Davis hooked Josh Gilgren down to the ice to end the period, which left us with 145 on CMU second power play of the night. They're 0 for 1. Clements tried to feed one in on net, and it was scurried through the wickets of a couple of players. Back to walk it is Clements, who will gingerly scoop it and take it back to the opposite zone. This game brought to you by SeamitchIceHockey.com. For live stat schedules and more, take a trip to SeamitchIceHockey.com. There you can find stat schedules and much more, along with player interviews, exclusive highlights, and much more. C-M-I-C-H, I-C-E-H-O-C-K-E-Y.com. Jace Johnson, rather Jay Nadu, to dig in against Phaneuf at center ice. And just like we began the period, CMU, first blood, right to left they go, and then Maroon and Golds. And Val Robertson, who has to take off a streaky Phaneuf, trying to work him over to the left. Golden Grizzly colors, white, black, and gold for Oakland. Number 11 in the country, wins this year over Hope College, 8-3. to three. Along with Saginaw Valley State, 4-3 to three in overtime last week. They've done just enough to stay inside the top 16. That go to Nationals. Here's Robertson with a shot. Blocked off the skate blade of Ruiz. Good keep in by Clements. He'll quarterback this. Get it down to Owen Campbell. That one flurries off a couple of sticks. And ultimately, it was Kaji who cleared the lane. 50 seconds to go. And CMU second man advantage. To button hook behind his net. Robertson slowly surveys past the defense. Gains the red line and dumps it in. First two it is Monty. Now Messina gets worked over. Could have been a fast break for Chippa had it not been for Josh Gilgren, who takes down Chippa to the ice. No U fans not happy about it. 24 to go in the power play. Messina walks in, feeds it to Johnson, back to Messina. One touches it to nobody in particular. Brody Plant forwards it for Chippa. Two on one develops to the net. They score! Chippa on the one-time feed by Plant from the turnover leads to a shorthanded goal. Three, nothing, OU. Devin, if you're Central Michigan, that's exactly what you did not want to happen there. Three, nothing lead for Oakland University. It looks like momentum starting to finally creep on your side. Davis goes to the box penalty, carries over into the third period. And then you go down and you give up a shorthanded goal back-breaking for Central Michigan. Every start to the period has been back-breaking. All three goals in this game have come within the first five minutes, and the last two goals have come within the last two minutes of each period, all being the first, the second, and the third, and it's Evan Chippa with his 12th goal of the year, had three last weekend in Saginaw, including the overtime winner, four to three. Two assists even in the win last year, and they're not done yet. Here comes Jake McCaddy quickly to the zone. One touch pass to the slot, and that one was actually shot by McLeod. I thought he was going to funnel it to a man in front. Jones saw it for the easy stick save. So now down 3 nothing in this game. CMU finds themselves in a familiar spot. It's tough to start periods that way. Julian Johnson tries to funnel one. Up to Vasilovich, turned it over. Walking in was Davis. Left it there for Furtick, who takes a check. Kissed by Hutton. McLeod, back to retrieve it for Williams. CMU with wholesale changes. 17.27 to go in this third period. Chippa on a nice feed across by Plant, who caused the turnover. One-time blast at the right circle, and Jones somehow found that. 
underneath himself, and OU celebrating like it's a goal. Look out, they're going out in the corner. Gilgren was not happy about the celebration, and he got, he got roughed up, but Caddy did. Oh my, that you're, was dangerous. If you're Josh Gilgren, that is a penalty you absolutely cannot take. And they might send him off here. We have talked all season about discipline with this Central Michigan team, as he is rightfully going to the box there. Well, I, actually, I don't, I don't blame him too much for what happened as Jones took a couple of whacks there. That was, that was McCaddy trying to celebrate, thought he scored on the play. He didn't, obviously, but Gilgren went after him. I don't blame the decision of him, but you have to be more coincidental. Each to each team, three nothing is still the score we mentioned off of Evan Chippa's twelfth of the year, and they'll assess this at center ice. Fans at both corners still wondering exactly what happened on that one. We kind of explained it to you. Jones took one too many whacks in front. That was a heck of a one-time blast by McCaddy, who thought he scored. Both assistant captains, Messina, the only one for CMU tonight, and Jacobo for Oakland. Central elected to scratch both of their top players tonight, and Nathan Bottles and Christopher Martin, rather their, their core leadership. Messina serving as the lone decision maker in that huddle. And so they're gonna put two minutes on the box. That's the second time tonight Gilkert has gone for coincidentals. Messina wondering why there would have been a call like that. So, two minutes as they get things settled down. A score, up, score update for you along the MCHC. Calvin University ties number one Grand Valley at two from Griff's Georgetown. That is a heck of a result for a Calvin team that is on the fringe top 10 looking to get in. That might just put them over the hump. But sitting at number nine right now. Let's talk about that game for Grand Valley, Devin. We talked about Grand Valley looking prominently unstoppable after that Central Michigan series to end out first semester. Huge tie against Calvin. With the new rankings coming out soon, is that gonna drop them from the number one spot or have they built up too much of a resume, but great win, that, or great tie, excuse me, by Calvin? Well, I would think back to the game they had against Hope earlier this year, where they beat them on their Now eyes. it's gonna be Beamish to go to the box. That's not Beamish, Derek, that's... Oh my, is that Jace Johnson in the box? Wow, not sure what happened there. That was, that was an odd sequence. We didn't even see what happened. We were talking about Calvin tying number one team in the country. So two Chippewas sit in the box. It's still coincidentals four on four now for the next minute and 33. And if I'm seeing correctly, there are two Oakland Grizzlies in the box as well. So it's still four on four. So they gave double coincidentals. That's what it was. That's, I was gonna say yeah. that was my guess. So we stay four on four. Andrew Porzani dangles into the slot area trying to get one. Never got the shot off on Pottinger as he got worked over by Williams trying to get in for the backhand attempt. And Porzonic has been persistent and he has not had the greatest year to his standards. Only four goals this year through 16 games. He was the team leader last year with 40 points. But since this year has gone cold and he'll go back off to the bench frustrated. Connor Morgan. I still really like that move by Prezonic, Devin. Really great job by him to crash in that, try and get as easy of a shot on Pottinger as you can. Schultz turns around and fires. Missed the net well wide. Camara to look for anything in front. Winds up, missed it. The near post. Now Schultz reclaims possession, but lost it under his own handle. Messina to retreat. Under duress by Plant. He'll weave. Backhanded to Camara. It's too strong for him. Schultz lost an edge, trying to work over McLeod. Morgan with a good back check to help out Camara. Neither team really in sync. Central can't find a clean pass. Morgan pushes Chip out of the boards. Tucked in the corner. Morgan reclaims that corner. Battle for the 21s. 
stuck underneath corner boards. Plant across for a feed in front and a shot saved by Jones off the skate blade of Kachi. Really good fundamental save there by Lauren Jones and Devin. As hard as it is to see with that three on the scoreboard for Oakland University, we've talked about it time and time again tonight. Really good start for Lauren Jones, and he's done a lot of really good things for Central Michigan here tonight. No doubt, and you have to respect the saves on 27 of what is now 30 shots in this game for OU. He's seen a lot. This defense has had a tough time getting out of their zone a lot. A lot of that being tired and being hemmed. This is a fast and physical OU team. But Jones, in only his third game this year, has really been met to the task. Not many he can do about these. That last one was a two-on-one feed from Plant to Chippa. Made it 3 nothing, short-handed. And that's where we sit. Flying bodies. Vasilovich tries to intercept the pass up the wall. Robertson there to it. He'll find some time. Chased after by Furtick. Tags up with Jace Johnson, rather Julian. Back to his defenseman, Clements. Back to five on five we go. Over the red line, touched by Beamish. Keeps it onside. Avoids the icing, more importantly. Jace circles back to the point. Finds Messina, cross ice in front for Kent, but he missed him. Lucas Hutton now tries to redirect traffic again. One more time off the left skate. Set up and into the netting by Monty. So that will stop play again. 13-15, three to go in the third. And you know, Devin, there's still plenty of time here for Central Michigan to make the comeback. 13-53, as you mentioned. All you gotta do, pit shots on net. And you know what? It's a lot easier for me to say that it from up here. It is easier to say, isn't it? It's easy to say and hard to do. Very difficult. Near side attempt in front. That was almost it. Tic tac pass. Campo looked for Nadu and it was too strong for him. And OU gets a chance to change their entire line. Messina weaves past traffic. Campbell stopped at the red line. Probably should have moved further. Lucas Hutton now is under attack by Jules St. Marie. Phaneuf takes away that lane. Campbell, bounce pass off the wall and he can't find it. And you know, they have tried those bounce passes a lot in this game. And I think maybe one or two have connected. If that one does right there, Campbell gets a chance. Who missed on a breakaway earlier, rather near breakaway. It just, look, you can't say much more than just bounces. You can call it haven't gone their way. You can call it their cycle, but their offense has been stagnant. Will Rapoon from the point, tries to take a shot under the skates. That one got blocked first time. Jace Johnson winds up. Off the blocker of Pottinger. Back to Rapoon, the quarterback. He'll forward this on net. Connor Morgan now. Once again, they work along this wall. Ruiz takes a check. Falls down. They get it across up the right wing. Right the left wing, Santa on the net. Shoots short side and that one went off the post. Another try from a far angle by Fanuff over the net. Half wall, set in by Evans. Kicked out to the corner. Swatted out of midair by Morgan. Lost his stick for a moment. Another try, it's loose in front and it's cleared away by Rapoon. OU holds possession though, Dino to the net. Trying to crash. Once again, backhand, it's touched down by Fanuff, and it didn't have enough smoke to redirect in front of Jones. Again, it's backhanded, and Fanuff missed it at that time. Three, four onslaughts coming from OU. CMU cannot get out of their zone. Rapoon in a scrub across the way. One more try, that one was touched under the wickets of Deneau and missed. 11.55 to go in this third period. Central is feeling the heat. In the slot area, taken out of the play by Jace Johnson. Good defensive stand on one knee. That's Brendan Schultz trying to get to the bench desperately. Here comes Jace Johnson trying to get inside to the backhand. No, he gets hooked and a penalty's coming up on OU. As Michael Santa hooked Julian Jace Johnson 
who thought about getting a chance on the net and none came of it. That's gonna put CMU to the power play. This is gonna be a huge opportunity for CMU going right back onto the power play for the third time tonight. As you mentioned, that was on Michael Santa. Has only played in three games this year. Wait, there's a Central Michigan player in the box as well. There is, it's Josh Gilgren for that scrum earlier, Derek. That's correct. So CMU will go to the power play for the third time tonight. They're 0 for 2, allowing a shorthanded goal earlier. Their best chance of the game is right now to find some scoring. Here's Jay Nadu. He'll funnel this up to Clements. Worked it down to Campbell, who finds some open ice. He'll quarterback this play. Tries to evade traffic from Plants. Send it in front, looking to go across to Clements, and he couldn't get through the passing lane. Now Campbell, one-timer by Robertson! And that one off the mask. That one went off the mask of Pottinger. Whoa! Near side. Missed the net, and now it's coming back. They have to reset. Robertson up the wing for Nadu. Pushed too far for him. Porzonic to the end boards. Play with Campbell. He'll deck his man, Monty. Clements tries to send one from a sharp angle, and it's easily seen by Pottinger. One minute exactly left in their third power play, and OU's out. They'll go off for wholesale changes. CMU will as well. On comes the second power play unit. Robertson, Jace Johnson. This is Brandon Clements. And the lone buzzing B is Chippewa. Evan Chippewa. Up the right wing with speed. Connor Beamish tries to move in over onside. He will get to the net. Pottinger, first save. Second try coming from Messina. He'll wind up. That's a blocker save. Johnson keeps the line. Beamish with open eyes across. Messina missed that one on the far side. Their best attempt. It's in the slot, and they clear it out. Chippa got there first, and it's a race for the puck. Dominic Ruiz short-handed. 14 seconds left in the third man advantage. Oh, my. All the CMU faithful, faithful came to their feet as Messina had a back door open, and he missed the net. Power play is over. Out of the box comes Santa. 0 for 3 on the Knights are the Chippewas. Bishop under duress will find one to lift in the air. A bow walks into the zone, takes a check by Morgan. It's loose to the far corner. Picked up by Fanuf. Furtick gets it in front of the net, near side by Fanuf. That one might have clicked iron. Now the working a sharp angle score! Wow! What a shot by Fanuf. Wrapped it around the net. Put that one past the far post of Jones from a very tough angle. And that's a killer. 4 nothing, Oakland. What a shot there by Fanuf. You mentioned it, Devin, from a very sharp angle. Somehow it finds its way past the body of Lauren Jones. Pitch. I'll tell you how. That was just one dandy of a shot selection. Pick the corner, and then right back in. Over the line, centering. Trying to find Dylan McMullen, and it was too strong. Central down 4 nothing in this game to a hot Oakland University team. First time scoring two goals in a period in this one. Central has been snake bit. Big time. Outscored 37 to five in the last five games. Connor Beam is trying to do something about that. Can't get past the defense. And Pottinger gets to whistle this. And Beamish is trying to argue his case for some kind of call. He's not gonna get anything. 8.17 to go in this hockey game. Man, Devin, if you're Central Michigan, you gotta finish out the final 8.17. At least get something to be proud of going into film and going into the game here. Or excuse me, back at home tomorrow 
when you get to rematch these same Golden Grizzlies. Yeah, that one will be slated for a three o'clock start, rather four o'clock. We'll be live here, 405 Eastern time on CCHN for a 430 puck drop. There's a shot onto Lauren Jones. He can't find it. It's a mad scramble in front and it's finally seen by Campbell. But tomorrow night, tomorrow evening rather, this Chippewa team, if this one holds, barring a miraculous comeback, trying to do something about it here is Porzonic and that one's gloved into the netting, rather stick by Pottinger. That would be five straight losses where they haven't had more than two goals in a game since Adrian, when they blew them out massively. Like nine to one and 10 goal wins in that one. But since then, they just have not found their mustard. It's frustrating for that team. It's frustrating for that coach, Brendan Martin. I feel for them. They made many line changes tonight, the likes of a new fourth line with Vasilovic, Johnson, and Bishop. They slotted Jace Johnson with Schultz and Morgan. And the offense has just has not been able to find pay dirt. And here come the Grizzlies the other way. Santa looking to wind up, lost footing of the puck. And it gave CB time to reset. Now they'll try from a left circle chance by Furtick. And he caught Jones in the blocker. Back out of the air is Nadu. He'll finish this off for Thomas Monty. Wraps it the boards for Furtick. One touch shot by Johnson missed. Owen oh, Campbell's in the net, takes a hit up high. That's gonna be a penalty. A high stick by Furtick to the face of Campbell, and he's still down on the ice. Hutton answering himself. Campbell's still down. And Hutton's got to keep his cool here. Referee pushing Lucas Hutton over to the near boards, trying to break up that skirmish. But I really like, once again, we've talked about all these positives with Lucas Hutton. Gets right in there. He sees Owen Campbell get the high stick the stick up high and then he's right in there to back up his teammate another really good thing I like from Lucas Hutton well you know he was a captain at Novi High School was a mentor for a lot of successful Novi Wildcat teams we know the long history between the connection of Central and Novi the likes of Jay Nadu the Martin brothers along with Lucas Hutton as you mentioned but in his case, you have to like him defending his case. That was a tough high stick, but it puts Simi to their fourth power play of the night. They're 0 for 3. Jace Johnson, this kid can score. They need something from him. They'll send it back up to the point for Messina. Over to Johnson, looks from open ice, takes it. Pottinger found the stick save. And it's clear the length of the ice by OU. Settled down by Jones. We've talked a lot about Lucas Hutton tonight, but Devin, there's also a lot to really like about Jace Johnson. His awareness on the ice, his ability to handle the puck. There's just a lot to like from this younger group for this Central Michigan team. A lot of potential. And as a CMU fan in a year that's been pretty tough the last couple of weeks, last couple of games, that's, that's great to see. That's and what you look for in those growing pains. I was gonna say, it gives you a lot of hope to see some of these younger guys, a Jace Johnson, a Lucas Hutton. Um, we saw Nick Wilson in the second game against Adrian College earlier this year. It's You're starting to see the future come together for Central Michigan and Brennan Martin and company has done a great job of getting their guys in here and starting to build that culture back up for CMU. Porzonic looks to shoot from the wall and Pottinger found that. And Porzonic looks to the sky. And what I've noticed too about Jace Johnson is he's such a mellow person. He doesn't get too high, he doesn't get too low. He stays the same on and off the ice. His brother Julian transferred from Adrian College two years ago from the Division II team. Found success in his first couple of games. First goal at Florida Gulf Coast. We had hoped that Jace was gonna score out in Florida as well. It did not work out, but boy has, he looked impressive. I don't think he would say that personally. Yeah. Seeing he hasn't scored yet, but we know what development looks like, and he's had a lot of it. 17 seconds to go in CV's power play. Behind the net is Jay Nadu. He looks to pass this to Campbell. He'll look to lob this one to the net. Takes the shot. That scores! Nadu was in front to tip it home. Central finally breaks that scoring drought. 
their first goal of the night on the power play. Devin, I was about to talk about all this talent for Central Michigan, talking to head coach Brendan Martin. He talked about all this talent they have up and down the roster. We've talked about it. Off year for Andrew Persanic, off year for this player, off year for that player. What a shot there. And then the tip in by Jay Nadu to get Central Michigan on the board. And that's exactly what you want. Something positive to carry over until tomorrow. Kent Bell led the line, but I thought it might have been tipped by Nadu. Nonetheless, they get on the board. That top line has been persistent. And Owen Campbell has connected with Nadu for a number of goals this year. Campbell has seven. Nadu has four assists. We'll wait for the official scoring mark. Jones is gonna glove this one down. But even if this game doesn't turn around in the last four and a half minutes or so, you finally put something in the back of the net to beat this netminder in Pottinger who has best been a stone wall. Yep. He made him look really good. And it's Morgan, veteran of Orchard Lake St. Mary's, has a draw in his own zone and wins it. Among all things, Connor Morgan has been very good in the draw circles tonight. Connor Morgan has been a player, we have said his name a lot tonight. But if that goal does go to Owen Campbell, it will be his eighth goal of the year. Team leading eighth goal, may I add. This one is still loose in front. Jacobo was trying to tip it in. He gets worked by, Camp by Keel. Gets it to the trapezoid for Deneau, who works out of the deep zone. Turns around to funnel it back to the dangerous area. Hauled down on the play is Thomas Davis, and that's gonna be a penalty coming up on Braden Keel. So Keel is gonna go to the box for hauling down Davis with 421 to play in this game. OU will get their third power play, fourth power play of the night. They're one for three. Out of the left circle, they're gonna redo this draw. That was not clean enough. Rather, I stand corrected, they're one for two tonight. So OU, one for two on the power play. They will. Look to put this back to a four goal advantage. One time blast from the left inside circle by McCaddy. Turned it wide to the right top corner. McCaddy gets it back in the slot. He takes one on that. That one off the skate of Robertson wide. Davis looks for his options. One on one against Clements. Takes a check to the boards. Turns around and holds possession. They work up the wall to Williams. Up that far side, they cycle. Back to Williams, trying to get it to the front. They will, Williams came downhill and tried to get a one-time blast and he fanned on it. OU holds the line. It's Deneau. In across. Now they'll work it in front. Backhanded on Jones and he made the blocker save. It kicked out to the end boards. One minute to go in this keel penalty. Braden keel penalty, OU. From the top of the left circle, this one turns wide off Williams. Up the glass, and button hooking is Davis over the Wild Wings logo. OU looking for wins in four of their past five. Their last loss came at the hands of a sweep to Lawrence Tech. They also lost big to Michigan State. Swept University of Michigan Flint, OU. They tied and won in overtime against Saginaw Valley State. And this one, if they can hold on, will not go longer. A dangerous touch pass in front. Scuttered wide to the left post. Kept in. Across for Williams. Too strong to handle. With 10 seconds to go in the man advantage. One time blast. That one turn once again heel. Davis. McCaddy. Hems in Bishop to the slot. They score. McCaddy, as time expires on the power play. Finds that dangerous crease over the shoulder. Five to one. What a shot there by McCaddy, giving him his first goal of the evening. Oakland University's fifth goal. Man, Devin, this Oakland University four check, it is something special. When it's going, it is going. 
McCaddy of Grand Blank, Michigan with his 11th goal of the year. Did not play in 22-23. It spent some time with the Shreveport Mudbugs in the NH NAHL, the Null for short. Before that was a veteran of CompuWare's AAA program. Spent three years there. Amassed 17 goals and 27 points in 33 games. And comes to this OU team as one of the younger guys, technically. But he gets on the board for the first time tonight. Five to one, OU. Had a terrific game from start to finish. We talked about every period they scored within the first five minutes. In the final two periods, they scored within the front two. A couple of guys had their first. Jewel St. Marie. Fanouf with his third of the year. And Deneau continues his scoring onslaught with his team leading 17th. On the other side, Owen Campbell got a good tip in front. This one's gonna come back. Looks like it was iced. But for this Brendan Martin squad, the Wolves continue. They have shifted lines. They had a lot of notable scratches tonight, the likes of Kyle Bowerson, Nathan Bottles, their assistant captain, missing his first game as a Chippewa ever in his two-year tenure here. Chris Martin, the captain, also without playing time tonight. They went back to Lauren Jones. A lot of these goals, not his fault. He's taken a lot. But this CB team, team is gonna have to go back to the drawing board. They'll get a chance tomorrow for a 4.30 puck drop back on home ice. To open 2024 though, it's more of the same. This one's kept into the zone by Messina. You gotta respect the effort they continue to provide and Messina just took down a Grizzly player in front of the point. That was Jules St. Marie, who's still down on the ice. And I think they're gonna send off Messina, they will. Spencer Messina has left the ice. He took a man down on the OU blue line. And Messina will get sent to the locker room early. With Got it. 90 seconds left in this game. So they will gather at their own benches and kill off some more time here. As we mentioned, tomorrow we'll have the broadcast for you, myself, and either Reagan Cleves or Parker Morrison. We're not really sure yet. Hope you're healed up and good at home, Reagan. We'd be back for tomorrow live on CCHN. And Make sure to follow the women's team tonight as they are just underway against Aurora. It looks like first period action. The new team Aurora in the CCWHA. But how about this women's team ranked third right now in the uh, South, or rather, what, what Central. Are we, are we Central? Central. Thank you. Wow, that, I can't believe I didn't remember that. But yes, yeah, Central. Central region behind Sioux College and Lawrence Tech. By the way, Sioux College, the reigning national champions, beat number two. Uh, Lawrence Tech, 12 nothing, 9 to 1, I believe. 9 1. That's wow. Sioux College team, Devin. Man, they are special. They are trying to go they are. back to back. Big but, weekend series for them against Assiniboine, the two Canadian teams. But Central Michigan, I love seeing the expansion of women's hockey, Devin. Eastern Michigan starting to get teams. Um, there's rumors about Iowa University, Iowa State, Illinois State starting to get teams. So we're going to see the CCWHA starting to grow a little bit westward. We saw that with Aurora this year. Man, I love to see the expansion of women's hockey. Well, the women's team right now is number three, as we said. They are looking for back-to-back -back nationals appearances, the first time ever in their history, making it last year. One minute to go in this hockey game. Here's CMU's Robertson winds up from the slot. Missed it wide. Button hooking out of his own zone. Ruiz under duress. Kachi will walk with it. Tagged up with Conti. Rather Monty. Up the wall for Ruiz. Gains the red line and dumps it. Final 37 seconds are a power play, but all but amassed in this one. It's a tough night for CMU. They were down in this game from start to finish. Only one nothing and only two nothing after 40 minutes. But then the floodgates opened. Goals by Evan Chippa. Matt Fanuff. And finally, Jake McCaddy lead the way as Oakland University takes down the Chippewas for the third time in the last four games. Oakland 
wins this one. Five to one, the final. Goaltender Tate Pottinger gets the save with nearly 30 plus tonight. Played excellent from start to finish and Lauren Jones on CMU side saving 30 plus himself. A tough one to swallow as the central team, the only goal tonight scored by Owen Campbell, assisted by Jay Nadu. But the score reads five to one, Oakland University gets the win over their MCHC East rivals. Post game show coming up next with myself and Derek Steele. And we'll recap this one and get ready for tomorrow as they get a rematch to close out this opening series of 2024. Five to one, Oakland University takes down CMU here on CCHN. Post game show coming up next.
you know. New Year's resolutions are all about leaving the old behind and getting to something new and well. For CMU, it was more of the same tonight. They dropped their fifth straight, uh, losing 5-1 to one to Oakland University tonight. Derek Steele joins me for the postgame show here. Uh, Derek, a really tough night for CMU. They were uh, outscored from the beginning. Oakland had all three periods where they scored within the first five minutes, two of those in the first two. They never seemed like they could really get their footing, and it results in OU getting another win, the three, third out of the last four against CMU. Yeah, really good win by Oakland University, Devin. But there's a lot of what-ifs for Central Michigan going into that third period down 2 to nothing. You're going on the man advantage. You got a minute 56 on the man advantage. And then you give up the short-handed goal. So there's a what-if. There's the Owen Campbell a short or a breakaway opportunity yeah. where he kind of pulls off the brakes, let everyone catch up to him, puck goes into the corner. So there's another what-if. So even if you're Central Michigan, there's a lot to clean up. But you're still, you're so close. You mentioned it. You're so close to breaking through, yet so far, another tough loss for them tonight. It is a tough loss, but they finished with 31 shots. Their lone goal tonight was from Jay Nadu, who gets his third of the year off the hands of his top line, Andrew Porzonic and Owen Campbell. Campbell did a great job shooting this one in from the point. It scudded through on a tip by Nadu. For some reason, Campbell led the line thinking he scored, but we kind of saw it from afar. Nadu gets that one, uh, that one coming at the 1541 mark of the third period. Oh, you got the last laugh, however, from Jake McCaddy, who scored his 12th goal of the year to uh, uphold CMU. Look, uh, in this one, I, I think also what you can say is they managed to keep the penalties down. It was a chippy game from start to finish. We saw late in this one Spencer Messina, the lone captain on the ice for CMU after Bottles and Martin were scratched, yeah. leave. And so we don't know what that's going to mean for tomorrow's game. We're going to wait that. Usually a disqualification sometimes can mean that you leave. It was a five-minute penalty. So for him, we're going to have to see whether that was 10 or a full game. But regardless, it results in what it does. Let's get to our three stars of the game. Our first, let's get to your keys. Yep. You said you had to trust your goaltending in Lauren Jones. Get on the four check going from the start and forget about the last semester. Well, could they forget about it? <laughs> you mentioned it, New Year's resolutions. Well, Devin, this really didn't go the way Central Michigan had drawn up, but there's a lot to like from both the forecheck and from the goaltending. I was really impressed with how Lauren Jones handled himself behind the pipes for only his third start of the season. We've talked about it all night. Head coach Brennan Martin saying that they trust him. He's the veteran leader in that locker room between all the goalies. Another really good outing. Even though the stats doesn't show it, another really good outing from Lauren Joes. Obviously, a couple of shots he wishes to have back. And then the four check. We talked about all the opportunities for Central Michigan. Some of some of those shots are eventually gonna are gonna start getting buried. Some really tough opponents and some really good goaltending Central Michigan has seen now the five last five games. Yeah, Jones in his only his third start of the year, the veteran junior out of Fenton, Michigan. Uh, came in and saved officially 36 on 41 tonight. That's still a remarkable achievement, especially with the way Oakland was hounding them on the forecheck and on their power plays. Let's get to our three stars of the game tonight. Uh, third star we gave to Owen Campbell for the lone CME goal, followed by Brendan Deneau for that opening goal. And a uh, good tally at that. It was a great tip in front from Matt Fanuff, who did a nice job from a sharp angle to work it in. And our first star of the night, you gave it to... Jake McKinney, why? Yeah, McKinney had a really good goal, or a really good night, Devin. Goal and assist for him. By the way, what a beautiful goal that was for Jake McKinney. Another really good assist. And he just was up and down the ice. Really good night overall from him. A lot to be proud for Jake McKinney and the Oakland Golden Grizzlies. Yeah, and certainly led the way. Finished this game off with uh, what would be the final goal in this one in the final uh, three and a half minutes. Let's take a look to next week's game or next week's game. What am I saying here? <laughs> Reading sheets too much. Tomorrow night's game. Oakland visits CMU at Martin Ice Arena. The Chippewas come back to home ice where they haven't fared much better than on the road. Uh, it's a slated for a 4.30 p.m. puck drop. We're not sure if Parker Morrison's going to be on the call. You will be gone. I wish I was still with you, but it was a fun time. Our first call together. It I was. really enjoyed. Did a great job as always. 
and uh, hopefully Reagan Cleves is feeling better out there. We know you were feeling under the weather, buddy. We're listening to you and hope uh, you're listening to us and we're able to get you back out here for tomorrow's game. Let's give an update on some out-of-town scoreboards. Uh, Saginaw Valley in Michigan, that one's still awaiting a score final in that one. Calvin was at GVSU tonight. The Knights tie the top team in the nation, GVSU. That's going to bode well for them. Calvin came in as the number eight team in the country, looking to be one of those seven that are ranked in the top 15 right now in the MCHC East. Looking for a bid, that one final 2-2. Two two. Flint took on Adrian tonight from 8 p.m. Hope versus Nebraska. No score update there, but make sure to check out the ACHA Men's Division Three website for all of those score updates as well. Meanwhile, Missouri still in action against Arkansas. Notre Dame was visiting Florida Gulf Coast. That game is concluded. Meanwhile, the Grand Rapids Griffins are at Manitoba, the Manitoba Moose, for a two-game weekend series. The Saginaw Spirit were on NHL Network today. We were watching it a little bit before yes. this one. Saginaw was up 2-1 to one last we checked in that. Meanwhile, the Red Wings against the Hurricanes. That one has concluded. Last we saw was 2-2. Two, two. You two probably final. see a bigger four, score. Two, Is final. it 4-2? Four, 4-2 four, four, two? Four, okay. two two, eventually. The Red Wings, Wings lost. Win. Oh, they did. Red Wings oh, they lost 4-2. Look at me just going through this. Well, that breaks their uh, six three wins, huh? Is it three-game three winning, winning streak? They won six, six of the last game eight. Point yeah. point streak. They, they won six of the last eight. We know that for sure. Uh, really good to see. How fun is it right now to be a Red Wings fan? How oh, fun man. is it to be a fan of Detroit sports? Holy cow. You Lions. ready for the Lions Sunday? I was. I am. Big game against Tampa Bay. Red Wings got Tampa Bay Sunday what did night. You do, what did you do when they won the wild card? What was your first reaction? Oh, I broke down into tears. <laughs> I've, I'll, I'll, I'll fully say it for everyone watching Lifelong the Lifelong Lions game. fan? Of course. Hey, there's been way longer than us, too, but that yep. was a relieving feeling to see the Detroit Lions win their first ever playoff game in 30 years against the Los Angeles Rams. And how cool is it over Matthew Stafford, too? Still love that guy, but he had to go somewhere, and that was Los Angeles. So that's going to just about do it for this broadcast. We want to thank everybody for helping us out with this one tonight. Uh, Trevor Weiser, did I say that right, Trevor Weyers? Wires, Trevor Wires, first time ever on camera tonight, and I think he did a pretty damn good job. So make sure you give him some stick taps for that one. Great job, Trevor. Sam Tomachinski running the ones and twos on the production box. Thank you, our great audio technician producer tonight. And thanks to uh, Joe Laser, as always, for running the social media. Make sure you go give us a follow if you haven't. I don't know how you're not following the social media if you're not because it is one of the best in the ACHA I've seen. Also, thank you for helping us get set up tonight, Derek, and pinch hitting for Reagan. Hopefully he's back with me tomorrow, but you did a great job. Feel better, Reagan. Hopefully you're back with us. Another great game on tap for Central Michigan tomorrow. Really tough Oakland University team coming into town. Yeah, well, the final tonight is 5-1. to one. It's the eighth game this season. CMU has scored a goal or fewer in it. They'll look to muster some kind of offense tomorrow against this high-flying Oakland team. So that will do it. Thank you so much for watching and listening to this broadcast of CMU Hockey here on CCHN. Remember tomorrow to catch us for a 4.30 p.m. puck drop. We'll be right back here in Martin Ice Arena. But for now, the final in this one, Oakland University takes down CMU 5-1 to one in resounding fashion. Until then, for Derek Steele, myself, my name is Devin, Devin Sarah. You've been watching this presentation of CMU Division Three Hockey on CCHN.